one day before opening day. FT Live with you. Frazier's back and Crash and Krasinski. And what did you do? Subscribe. And when's the new time of the show? Oh, get ready. Yeah, tomorrow. Oh, you're going to see. I'm going to wear a special outfit tomorrow. Special outfit tomorrow? Yeah. To promote the new time? I'm celebrating the fact that I'm getting my life back. Some of, some of my life. <laughs> I'm at least going to get, I'm going to have the mornings instead of just, you know. I agree. I get the mornings too. I've been missing the mornings. You don't, you sleep till noon. That, I sleep till noon. We're on at 11. Well, you will do, go, you'll go back to sleeping. Till noon. I do a full work day before I even get here. What are you talking about? Please, please. Crash, I handle sponsorship crash, sales. Phrase, please explain your full work day. You wake up at nine, you get your latte, your cold brew. Maybe get a little bicep curls in. No, now I'm going to be able to go to the gym and have it like an actual workout in the morning again. Right now, I'm up at like seven and I'm, I'm working. It's I'm working hell, hard it's to make you look good. It's hell for you to be up at seven. I'm making you look good right now. In bed at four, up at seven. We know you, man. You're, we're working hard, man. Don't, yeah, exactly. don't listen to AJ. I know what you're doing. You're fine. Hey, there's a reason why he asked me for a cold brew coffee today. He but needs it, a little jolt. He needs a little jolt. Ultra, AJ, ultra still AJ is just trying to sleep shame you because he's a I wake up early guy. Like yeah, and he goes to bed at nine. Sorry, yeah. I'll be watching uh, Trout, Otani, Miguel Vargas, um, Freddie Freeman, all those West Coast teams. You know about them? Who? who? What's the West? Coast? <laughs> There's teams on the West Coast. <laughs> there Dodgers, is Dodgers, Angels, West Coast of Florida, Tampa. The Mariners are going to make the playoffs <laughs> this year. We're going to do our our uh, World Series predictions later, and we'll also do some some home run awards, all that kind of stuff, odds wise. So I want to start with this. I have a lot to get to right at the top here. First off, breaking news on foul territory. You get to sleep till noon. Besides oh, that, <laughs> <laughs> we have a new sponsor, uh, a new partner, as we'll be talking about. Um, our picks throughout the season, a little uh, money to be made. Frage knows what I'm talking about. You grew up in Jersey. You got to hustle. You got to make some make some moolah. So we're yeah. proud to announce BetMGM as our uh, exclusive betting partner here on FT Live on Foul Territory for the whole brand. Um, AJ, your thoughts? Uh, I can't wait. Hopefully they give me a suite when I go to an MGM hotel now. And <laughs> now I'm allowed to bet. I don't know if that's a good idea or a it's bad idea. It's a great idea. idea. I'm going to have to tell you a lot because I don't know what some of the lingo is. But uh, That's all you need, actually. I feel like I'm right a lot, which I probably will prove wrong with my bank account. <laughs> Kratzy, finally we get to see if AJ is right all the time like he says he is. Well, he doesn't say he's right all the time. He just says what he says, and Hawk said he was right all the time. So <laughs> yeah. I'm, tailing, I'm tailing AJ. It's He's got short arms, so he's not putting any money that he's not getting back out. You know, AJ might do some Todd bets where he's like, uh, I'm going to take these three teams to win the same division and, like, <laughs> just play even money the whole time. Sure. Listen, I don't, I don't do the even money thing. You don't know me too well. <laughs> but, so you just picked all five teams to win the Central last week. But <laughs> here, here we go. But what – I am definitely going to do, Scott, and as you know, you follow the mush, and the mush right now is Eric Kratz. You go the opposite of what he says. So anybody out there watching right now, whatever Eric says right now, you go with the opposite side. <laughs> so if, he, if, if he says the Pirates are going to win, go with the Reds. If he, You know, just, just figure it out. It's not that hard to figure out. So exciting time. Scotty, tell us all about it, man. I, I I couldn't be happier. Hey, we're going to all our, our odds. We'll go off bet MGM's uh, pristine lines. We will make picks. We'll look for any kind of value that we can on a daily basis. We're all going to have locks every single day. So obviously you can place as, as many bets as you want, but one lock for each of you. And that's going to be tracked all season long. Money wise, you'll get an allowance per week in terms of what you can spend within the game that we're playing, but also throwing down real money. So we'll post some bet slips. You'll see what we're talking about. And also, I, I think good point brought up by Frazier for, for those that are maybe a little newer in the betting space. Um, what you were referring to, Frazier, is fading. So you're saying, let's let's fade Kratzy yeah. on his picks, right? So you can fade. Um, you can tell, which is what AJ's going to do with my picks all year. Yeah. He's going to copy me. Yeah. All of that. And it could be it could be uh, money line, who's going to win the game. It could be run line, which often is, is one and a half. You think the team's going to win by two or more. Uh, pitcher props, which are really fun. I think that's probably going to be one of the specialties for this group, especially with the catchers. Over, under strikeouts. Uh, K props. So, you know, you'll have Dylan Cease on the mound, and I'll be like, AJ, 
You know, nine and a half K is over or under. Over. Over. You don't even know. It doesn't matter. <laughs> doesn't matter. <laughs> over. <laughs> so I, I'm looking forward to the all of that. Struck out ten guys like every game last year. There was one year in where four innings. It was like ten K, twelve outs, ten Ks. We'll look for themes too. So it was, I think, the COVID year when everybody had Kratzy like the baseball goes here, and then if I if I left my if my left uh, hand went away from my right hand, um, the ball would be stuck right the sticky stuff for everyone and the strikeout rates were off the charts and there were a few guys like i remember some of my friends were throwing down on um shane bieber's k prop and they hit like i think it hit at one point like 10 out of 12 or maybe even more than that and they were just like this is free money right now so they went way out on a limb with the guy who won a cy young on the k prop it's not out on a limb guys (laughs) this is where aj is just gonna get absolutely humbled it's not you gotta put you got to put more money down to win that bet. So that's the problem. If yes. you do lose, you're losing a lot more than what you really wanted to win. So um, a lot of hedging going to be happening here today. I'm going to explain that. We should explain that too once we get going. Hedge on Eric Kratz's bets. Thank you. Thank you. Um, <laughs> and so thank you again to BetMGM. You can see him at the bottom there of the screen. Um, that's where the ticker will run some lines and odds for the games. And even if, if you're not a betting uh person it's still pretty helpful insight like when we break down a division or talk about a world series winner you, you don't have to throw down we're money picking to, those today right to have fun. World series um, we're doing world series winner i want who's in the world series and who's winning we did our division picks yesterday i know fraser wasn't are we allowed on to ask ken rosenthal and dan duquette their picks our guests today also yeah you can try them I and they might not give you any but you can try you can well, try dan anything duquette, why would he not give it to him now ken's a little more involved no, Dan Duquette wouldn't give them to you because I don't know if he's looking at the game that way right now. Like he doesn't or, sit down. Or and... when they got to post it, so they got their certain times with their companies where it's like, all right, they got to post it. You know, two hours before the game or the night before, they might not want to let the cat out of the bag. But we might be able to get Ken's picks. Yeah, I think we might be able to get at least something. Or hey, if anyone's going to try, it's going to be you. So <laughs> also uh, some appearances later today. So you've got a radio spot, right? Radio uh, Chicago, yeah, radio spot with, jeez, um, I think it's... Is it Layla Rahimi again? Yeah, Layla yeah. Rahimi. Uh, but I think she's on 670 the score. I Gosh, I hope I'm right on that. I'll look that or up. Or ES- well, it's either one, a thousand, ESPN 1000 or 670 the score, but I thought it was the score. Way, way to be a, a Chicago mm-hmm. neutral man and just say both major radio stations, well, right? I used to have a radio show with both, so I don't know which one, because they flip-flop sometimes. They change stations? Well, the score used to be the White Sox. Now I think they have the Cubs. Right? Layla's at the score. Okay. I was right. Yeah. And then one, ESPN 1000 used to have, they used to be flip flop, and now they switch back and forth all the time. It's weird in Chicago, two team city. There's like a billion radio stations in New York, but Frasch is going on one of the top shows. What do you got later, Frasch? Uh, Michael K. Show, man. I'll be on there at 4 30, talking a little Yankees, um, talking about preseason, what do you expect, the injuries, all that stuff. Talk about our show and, um, you know, have a good time. My little kickstart there being uh, a Yankee Yankee guy now, so which is great. Yeah. So we know who Frazier's picking to win the World Series? Not necessarily. No, that, that, that's, the, they don't make you do That's yeah, ridiculous. I don't know. Well, all, all we know right now is this is a guarantee. We know who Eric's picking to be the World Series champion, so that's what we definitely know. Eric? Well, I mean, hey, if we know, then I don't even need to make my picks. When we do that, I'll go to practice. So I got, we got practice. <laughs> today, so I'm out. Todd's, Todd's already got my whole bet slip. So I think I, <laughs> I thought I was sending my, I was thought I was sending my information to Scott to make all my uh, yes. deposits. I guess I was sending it to Todd. So everybody, <laughs> make sure you hedge against me because I definitely was really good at baseball and. That's why I was in the game. It wasn't because I knew what was going on. Oh, he's, he's, oh. A little, he's a little butthurt right now, Scott. Ooh. He's a little butthurt. That's okay. <laughs> I'm going to make a prediction for you. I, I think there's going to be somebody like between our group that's going to gain a massive following based on their picks. You? True. No, I, oh. I actually think I think I think Kratzy might be the dark horse because yeah. he stays up later than you guys. True. He's locked in. He's on Twitter a lot. I know I you're, don't you're have fresh a life. on Twitter. I didn't want to say it, but he did it for me. <laughs> <laughs> I think Kratzy might be a, a dark horse, uh, as they call him in Vegas, sharp. I, I think might be a sharp for MGM. He could be. We'll find out. Yeah. 
All right, let's I hope do top. Because then I'll just tail him and I'll exactly. make money. So, Kratz, yeah. you're going to make us all a lot of money this year. Frazier already said he's going everything against you, so let's go, Kratz. Me and you. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, live betting is what I'm excited for too with Kratzy. Yes. Like, get a yes. get a tweet during the game, which I'm a huge fan of. Like, if Kratzy's like, "Yo, I'm watching this pitcher right now, and this pitch is missing, or this pitch is on, whatever it is, picking up trends," I think is something that you guys are going to do better than most of the people that I follow in the gambling space right now, especially in the baseball betting space. There, there's work to do, um, so get ready. Wait, does that mean I have to follow Kratz? Follow Kratz on Twitter, yes. <laughs> Today's the day, finally. I follow Kratz, so oh, calm down, everybody. <laughs> hey, so someone made more money than um, all of us recently, um, as in yesterday. Andre Semenes, over 100 mil on the contract. Congratulations, big friend of the show. He'll be on throughout the season. Yeah, clap it up. I mean, that's, uh, that's a mega deal right there for Andre. <clears throat> um, so we'll kick things off that way, and we'll get more insight from Ken Rosenthal coming up last year. All-star starter, gold glove winner. His war was over seven, even if you're not a war person, just looking at the all-encompassing appreciation of defense, um, the bat, the speed. Uh, he had it all last year. He had a better wins above replacement number than Francisco Lindor last year. So just saying. Anyway, um, seven years, 106.5 million bucks for Andres. And um, there's an option that could get it up to the 128 range. So... He is a 100 plus million dollar man. Congratulations. Uh, good deal, bad deal for both sides, too. I mean, let's be real. Um, Kratzy, should he have waited things out or no? You're shaking your head already. This was the move? No, it's back late. You know, it's it's in the back. You know, the a lot of the money's, you know, I don't even can't think of the word right now. Backloaded. Todd's in my head so much, swimming, swimming laps with the whole hedging against me. But backloaded, it's, yeah, it's backloaded. Which he's either going to, if history goes well with the Indians, they're going to re up him at some point and you know do some kind of extension four years in if he's worth it. If he's not, they're going to trade him. So it's essentially going to be the same thing as if he would have waited for free agency. But he gets so much security. I love it for him. And I love it for the team. Good for the Indians. Good for the Guardians for not, you know, not waiting and like, you know, offering these guys that they feel like are the core. It's a little weird that, you know, a second baseman getting this kind of cash, but you know, he's I said it when he was on, you know, he's possibly one of the top two second basemen in the game right now, and they paid him like it. Yeah, he, he when he was with the Mets, I saw a star in the making. I, it was like one of my last years playing. He came up, you know, he was trying to find his own. I guess playing in New York, is, as everybody knows, is a little tougher than usual. But he came into his own. He's a guy that said, you know what, let me take the bull by the horns. Did well in the um, in the World Baseball Classic. And uh, now, now he's doing what he does, man. And he's just being a ball player. And that's all you can ask. I'm happy for the young man. Um, Skip Schuschmacher always told me, man, when you're in, in negotiations, you're the one that's making that decision. So not your agent, you know, not anybody else. Get that money while you can. And guess what? Don't worry about down the road. Oh, it's going to ruin other people What they, you know, it's going to ruin the market, all this, that, but it's not going to ruin the market. This is a great deal for him. And, uh, if I was him, like Scott says, what is he going to do? I wonder what he did what he, if he celebrated or had a party or something, that's pretty cool. I can't wait to ask him when we have him on again. Yes. We'll probably have him on within the week and be like, yo, come on. You got to you gotta do something. Aside from, you know, call fam, friends, and all of that, big-ass dinner. Yeah, take me to dinner, please. Because <laughs> he's paying. <laughs> Amen. Uh, uh, the thing of – congratulations, first of all, to him, to the young man for getting over $100 million. Great. He wants a place he wants to stay. Hopefully the, the Guardians step up and stay and keep him there for the whole contract and – try to run out this window with Jose Ramirez and Rosario and some of their pitchers. The thing that gets me, gets me is there's a tweet that came out mm. about this from straw man. I think his name mm. is. And here it is. This is going after this is after last year because they signed Jose Ramirez to a hundred million dollars. Four teams have never signed a hundred million dollar contract in their history. Eric Chavez hasn't played in like 10 years at least. Maybe Probably. more. And he's the highest. Salvi, okay, 482. That's um, twenty over 20 a year. Cabrian Hayes, 
And then you got Andrew Benatendi, and the, the three teams on there stand out, and they say, man, they're kind of low market, small market, and they, I could see that. But the White Sox' biggest contract is five years, $75 million they've ever signed a player to. That stands out to me. We had Hawk on here yesterday, and he kind of made some noise with his, his comments about the White Sox and, and how he was let go and some other things. But That went very viral, by the way. But – Five years, seventy-five million is the largest contract, and they're in a big, they're in a huge market, huge market. So that that was the one that stands out when you look at those. And that was Ben Intendi, who this they year. just signed, and that was a free agent signing. Yes, you look at the Padres, you look at some of these other teams that are so-called small market teams. The Padres are spending money like crazy. The Mets are spending money like and great, but to look up there and say, man, the White Sox have only. Five years, 75, and that's the biggest contract they've ever signed is kind of crazy to me. I was trying to look back for Luis Robert, but it was only six years, 50 mil. It could go up to eight years, 88, depending on if they pick Eloy stuff up. A, Eloy signed one and Moncada signed yeah, one. Yeah, but, but they're, they're all under big. 100. Huge, yeah. yeah, No. Um, well, props to them. On that part, I will say, they, went, they identified some players that they wanted for the long term, and you make an offer really early on. Also, those extensions that are being signed, have gotten larger for players. True. Corbin Carroll's yes. a great example, too. I mean, he's over 100 mil. He's played a minute in the big leagues. It's kind of like the Acuna deal, too, which which did hit 100. It just hit 100. But we're seeing more of those deals pop up Fringe. now. If you're young and yeah. you've got a high, high ceiling, you're getting paid for it. Fraser, you played for the White Sox, and yeah. you know the White Sox fans. They sure. keep clamoring for the team to make a splash. And a splash, yeah. I mean... They wanted Machado. They wanted Harper. I'm not saying go out and sign that. Those guys, you can if you want, which makes your team instantly better. You should have, yeah. But they want the guy. They want the top 10 starting pitcher or the top 10 position player that you can get for, you know, six years, 120, some, something yeah. like that, right? I'm sure when you were there, they were clamoring for the same thing. Like, let's go make the splash because this is their window. Let's go get that guy to put us over the top. Yeah, I mean, a couple of things. Either they didn't want to do it and they wanted to save money or the person didn't want to go there. I mean, there's a lot of variables to all this. But, you know, I remember Tim Anderson, his first year, he was he was a rookie. Um, he signed that deal. Uh, I forget exactly what it was, but it was for 50, 60 million, like to make over a course of some odd years. So it's like he's one of those guys where if he didn't sign that, he'd be over a $100 million guy. That would be something where – you know, in my opinion, that would have been the first guy they would have had to do for over $100 million because AL batting, <clears throat> he holds an AL batting title. He bats over 300 all the time. He can run. He can play defense. So there's one guy that could happen, but they're smart. They sign him early, save some money. They're, they're a very smart club. So, um, you know, kudos to them, but it is, it's a shame. These need, they need to start signing some guys that can come over here for six, seven years in, in Chicago and get the crowd, crowd buzzing again in the south side. 37, 37 and a half million for Tim Anderson. Man, what Yeah, a, I think yeah. He can make deal. more on top of that. Yeah. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. yeah there's mean, options. He's got options. he's got options, but that's yeah, but 14 yeah. mil for next year. That's that's awesome. The thing, the yeah. thing I'd like to hit on here, you know, is not, you know, you guys bang the White Sox. It's uh, you know, you played there, you worked there, you saw how they do things. Man, the Pirates. Like, keep Ryan Hayes. And I think each team might have that like precedence, have that like, well, we're not going over. What did Benetton get? 75? You know, they yes. might say, hey, we're not going over 75 for a guy because Key Brian Hayes just signed his 60, let me pull it up here again, 68 years, 70 million. But they front loaded it. We just talk about back loading it. They front loaded it because they've never paid anybody more than $10 million a year. They trade them before they make the $10 million a year. They gave mm -hmm. Key Brian Hayes $10 million in the first year of his contract. I think that, that makes it kind of more lucrative to be like, you know what? I want to sign that now because guess what? I'm getting a lot more money in those first couple of years. About, but who's to say what's better? Do you want it backloaded? Do you want it frontloaded? I mean, I was a guy, if I signed a long-term deal, I always talked to Major Matt. If I ever get that big deal, I want that Bobby Bonilla thing. I want that deferred payment. So now, like, for 10, 15 years after, I know I'm making 1.5 or 800,000, whatever it is. And you get that check and you're like, hmm, it's Todd Frazier day today, baby. Like, you know what I mean? like, <laughs> that's, that's something I would have liked. 
but I never got that opportunity. So, but if I ever did, why why did you want it? Why did you want it deferred? Just the excitement and opening up a check and be like, "Hey, honey, I didn't do anything today, and I got this." You know, let's go to Sizzler. Let's go, baby. Let's get out of here. But I mean, you're you're smart with money. I mean, <laughs> no, like yeah, but getting it's just exciting. Fun is always better. Yeah, and then you can make no. your own checks out to yourself. Well, it depends, no, Kratzy. No if if you're getting it backloaded or it's deferred or whatever, and you're going to get more money out of it, you're going to get interest too. Yeah, if you're going to get interest, interest. Yeah, interest starts to make things interesting. You know, I mean, Ken Griffey Jr. is the fourth highest paid player on the Reds this year. No, <laughs> he's still getting paid. Yeah. Yeah, he still makes three point five million. No way. Yes, he's still getting. He's checks. the fourth highest paid player, and he hasn't played. There's for a bunch the of guys out there, Scotty. Forever. There's there's not just Bobby Bonilla. There's probably about 30, 40 guys that are still. There's getting a lot of guys. Payment. Yeah, you'd be surprised. You just hear about Bobby Bonilla because of the Mets and Dennis Gilbert and they, when he first did that, and it was, it's, it was yeah. so long. But there's a lot of guys that still get checks because they defer money. Scherzer signed a big deferred. Yeah, but Scherzer's playing right now. Ken Griffey Jr. hasn't played in 10 years. Just like you mentioned Chavez, he hasn't played since 2014. How many – can we get a list of these guys that are still getting paid? You're our research department. Let's go. I'm the research, research department. <laughs> just imagine waking up on – just say tomorrow is your day. Mm-hmm. And – you open up that mail and it says 3.4 million. Like that would be so exciting for doing nothing, right? <laughs> <laughs> I would love it. I, I would celebrate you. that with you, Todd. Yes, I would like. I would celebrate dinner, it with Todd. you too. I'd meet you halfway at at the local Cracker Barrel and we would dominate Ooh. some uh, Big Mama's pancake breakfast. Yeah, get some cherry pancakes with extra whipped cream <laughs> on Todd. I love well, that. let's go, baby. This is going to be a good show. We're talking money. Let's go. Hell yeah. <laughs> well, and that's why. It's for BetMGM today. Well, that's why, though. Have you ever seen where someone wins the lottery and you can yes. either get the upfront, like, I don't know, 200 mil or they'll spread out like 500 yes. mil or something? You've, you've had you, one hey, of those situations? No, listen, listen. <laughs> no, I'm going I'm to switch gears just a little bit. So I'm a big 50-50 guy. Like, I'll go to the high school games. 50-50 tickets. I go to like a raffle at a dinner. So, all right. So the gal I went to last week, I'll give you the example. That, so this is me being smart. Long story short, I got, I got 30 raffle tickets, whatever it was, 10 bucks, but whatever. So there was probably 50 things you could raffle. So for me, everybody's going for the trip to Barbados. There was a trip to go to um, Barbados or something. So that was filled. Uh, the massage thing was filled. So I, I look in the corners. I'm looking for the ones that aren't filled, right? So for me, I saw the one where you can get your own chef for dinner for eight people. And I'm like, dude, I want this. And there wasn't many tickets in. So what do I do? I take my 30 tickets, drop all 30 in there. So I'm waiting. And of course, it's one of the last ones they called. And like, it's so loud in there. The lady's like, five, five, zero, nine, four. I'm like, shit that's me let's go i was so fired up dude like and the lady was like oh you always win i'm like no i want you know give me the damn thing you know it was just something but for the 50 50s i always hand it off to somebody else to give because i always i always give it back i'm like you know one time i gotta win the darn thing you know maybe get put get some gas money or something you never won a 50 50 no i have i always give the ticket to a friend and be like hey man Help me out. Go get all that money. Give them, give them half of what I gave. Because usually they're like, they get, look at me. I'm like, all right, take it all back. I'm like, come on. I mean, I, you know, I, I, I got to win one every once in a while. They're looking at you because of what? The baseball reference page that lists the contracts? Yeah, they, they know in my hometown. They know how much you make, man. It's, it's tough. <laughs> it's tough. You know who won the 50-50 as a player? Johnny Gomes. He won it during a game? Like he would yes, put in for it? We were, it Can you do that? Yes. You can. Okay. I was with Atlanta. We were with, we were with the Red Sox. We're in Atlanta, and then now he would buy a ticket to every road game. He'd buy the twenty dollars worth of tickets every game, and he yes. won in Atlanta during the game. They announced, and he's in the dugout. I won! I can't <laughs> believe it! I won! And this is when nobody went to the games in Atlanta. There was like, I think it was for like eighty five hundred, which some of them get up to like a hundred grand. Oh yeah, yes. some playoffs, some large yes. ones. Yes. This one was for I think seventy five, eighty five hundred, and he's like, I want the big check. He, they delivered, the, and I don't think he could get it though because they said he was an employee. Or that's something. what I'm saying. Yeah. I just said, you, but he did it every day, every yeah. game, and he and he finally won during a game, and he was so excited. You would have thought he he won two hundred billion dollars. It was <laughs> seventy five hundred, awesome. I think. All right, well, let's bring in uh, Mr. Money Man right now for us then. 
Kenny Ball game. Ken yeah. Rosenthal Kenny. joining us day before opening day. Ken, as, as you can tell, uh, a lot of money talk going on at the moment, which actually was kicked off by um, the newest rich man in Major League Baseball, Andre Jimenez. So um, good uh, afternoon to you. And what did you think of the Jimenez deal? These guys were breaking down. Hey, it's over $100 million. He's getting himself rich. Um, what did you think about it? Like, is there any chance on the other side that this ends up being a massive bargain for Cleveland? Oh, there's a good chance of that. And that's why Cleveland did it. The Guardians do not do these deals unless there's a chance of them achieving what they call in baseball now surplus value, getting more for the dollar than they're actually paying. And that's the entire point behind doing this deal. And they're talking to other players on their team as well about these kinds of contracts. So for Jimenez, I always look at this if it was my own son. What is the line where I say, okay, wait to free agency, it's not enough, or just take the money? $100 million, guys, is awfully difficult for any player, any human to turn out a different individual person, of course, but that's a big number. And I know there are people on the player side probably people with the union, other agents who would say, man, he sold himself short. He needed to wait. This guy is going to be a superstar in our game. And I believe that I, actually Andres Jimenez is that kind of player. He is outstanding. But in his mind, I have a chance here. There is that 1%, 2% chance I suffer a major, major injury. Even though players can buy insurance, they feel this is the best way to get their family's long-term security. And – that's how they go about it. And it's hard to fault them, but I'm sure there are people, again, who are critical who will say, listen, this is selling himself short, selling the player short, ultimately, because one deal, of course, is used as a benchmark for another. That's how the game works. Ken, uh, for me, I think that's a boatload of money. And we always talk about this when we talk. Like, listen, if somebody's going to offer you that much money and the fans are going to say the same thing, like, listen, it's one hundred six thousand a million dollars. Like you guys are crazy. You got to make all this, but yeah, there is more money to make. But now he's set for life. His kids' kids are set for life. Uh, it's it's a very hard thing to do. But now people are always like, ah, in baseball, like, oh, you're you're gonna ruin it for the other guy that's you know trying to make the money and put a standard at where it's supposed to be. Explain that to some people. How listen, how hard it is for players and how hard it is you know to figure out what exactly that money price is, but when to take it, when not to take it. Like there's, there's a big, with agents and all this stuff, like explain that. I think one thing that needs to be said, Todd, is every person's circumstance is different. So some players grow up extremely poor, especially players from Latin American countries. And their perspective on this is different than a kid who grew up middle class in New Jersey, for example, right? So that's part of it. There also are pressures, as you said, from the agents and from the union to get the most money possible. That's the way the union was built, frankly, and it's been very successful doing that. Maybe the most successful union in the history of our country, if you want to look at pure money. So there are all these tugs and different things pulling at players, and yet at the same time, there's a humanity to this too, or human element, I should say. It's a lot of money, and chances are you might not get that money in three years or four years. Now, chances are you might do even better, and you mentioned Tim Anderson before. Tim Anderson, if we hooked him up to a monitor and put him on a truth serum situation, I'm sure he'd say, I'm not all that happy with my contract, right? Ronald Acuna Jr., he signed for $100 million, but my goodness, Ronald Acuna Jr., if he had gone year to year through arbitration and then hit free agency – who knows what he might have made. Now, he even had a bad injury. He had a horrible injury, and he still would have come out all right. So there are two sides of it. It's not always as black and white as it might appear to the average fan. Yet at the same time, I'll repeat what I said before. I go back to what I would think about with my own son, and it would be difficult for me to say, hey, just – walk away from 100. Uh, I, that would be hard. You could say, well, Ken, where does that end? It would be difficult to walk away from 50. It would be difficult to walk away from 10. But there is a line for each person, for each player. And that's what each player must go through with his agent and in his own head, how to kind of figure out what's best for him.
is there a line for the teams? Like, is there, you know, you, you talk with ownership, you talk with front office. Is there a line for teams where they're like, you know, we're the White Sox. We're never going to spend more than 75 million is, you know, we're the, we're the pirates. We're never spending more than 10 million a year. Like, have you talked with teams or ownership or front office? That's like, ah, you know, we're, we're cut right here. We can't go any farther than this, no matter who it is. Eric, there absolutely are those lines, and we're seeing it play out right now with the Pirates and Brian Reynolds. Now, maybe they get that done. It's possible, and certainly with opening day coming, it's today or tomorrow where probably this gets done or doesn't. But there are certain areas where teams are not willing to go, and actually we have a story in The Athletic today. It's really good about the shortstop class, this last one. It's a billion-dollar class, essentially, just short of a billion Correa obviously could take it over a billion if his options are exercised down the line. And one of the points in this story is that the sizes of these contracts are going to create problems down the line for small market teams like the Royals, for example, with Bobby Witt. How the heck are the Royals going to keep Bobby Witt now? Now, this is a systemic problem within baseball. And it's been going on forever. This has been something in the 1950s. The Yankees would take all the players from the Kansas City Royals at that time. It weren't the Royals. They were the A's. So I don't know how you solve it. And that's one of the great problems in our game today. How do you make that disparity somewhat more reasonable? But that's where we are. And yes, to answer your question again, Eric, there are absolutely lines. And even in Cleveland's case, they would go to this level for Andres Jimenez, but I'm sure they wouldn't go to an, another level, right? This was where they landed. So it's something that informs our game all the time, the money, the disparities, and all the different things that go on. And Rob Manfred in recent weeks has mentioned this and even said it last night in a forum with the New York Post's John Heyman and Joel Sherman. He said, I don't have a problem with Steve Cohen doing what he's doing. He's playing within the rules. What he's concerned about as commissioner is the fact that because certain teams are spending here, then other teams can't be even in the competitive game. And that's, that's a problem for baseball. It's been a problem for a long time. Well, it's never going to go away again unless the salary cap, which the union I don't believe will ever allow. Who's next for Cleveland? Quan, Rosario, they have got a lot of guys on the books here that are young. So who would be next? The, the Rosario's kind of been rumored. I would like to see Quan, and Naylor. Who would be next for Cleveland to, to lock up like this? They've talked to a lot of guys this spring, AJ. It was actually detailed yesterday by our writer, Zach Mazel. I believe he had six names, six players that they had talked to. Some of the discussions went further than others. Quan was one. Rosario is another, though. I can't see them keeping Rosario. He's entering his free agent year, I believe, and – they have shortstops lined up behind them. And Jimenez is a shortstop. He played second base for Cleveland, but he certainly can play shortstop. He did that in the WBC. There are also guys like Tristan McKenzie. Now he's currently out with an injury. Trevor Steffen, a reliever that they've talked to. So I would expect that we're going to see at least one more from Cleveland perhaps in the next day or two. And down the line, if they can get guys on their terms, at their price, They'll do this. They want to do this. They want to keep their players like any team wants to keep their players. The question is, how much does it cost? Well, if Rosario walks from Cleveland and Jimenez goes to shortstop, that makes this deal even more club friendly, right? Shortstops usually get higher. Yes, paid higher. Shortstops usually get yeah, paid higher than second right. baseman. No question. And I'm not saying they're going to do that. Jimenez won a gold glove at second base last year. He's a pretty darn good second baseman. And they have, like I said, guys lined up behind them. Arias is one. But at the same time, yes, they have all this flexibility. And you're right. The deal looks even better if Jimenez goes to shortstop. Ken, let's get to some storylines and some predictions. We'll start with the article that you posted this morning. Completely <laughs> unserious opening day predictions for every MLB <laughs> team in 2023 presented in reverse nice. order of predicted finish, which I absolutely adored the article for all of the shots taken all over the place and, and the fun that was had. I can't even, I, I just encourage reading it. I'll just go over a few. Like one that hit home for me was 
Corbin Burns because he's going to be on the show all <laughs> yes. year long. He's one of our regulars. We had him talking arbitration, and, and your line was 12-0 and 0 start. Then he gets traded to L.A., and he'll be at the forefront of the Brewers missing the postseason again. And if you followed the arbitration story, that is what the Brewers said last year about Corbin. So anyway, how much fun did you have putting this together, and did you have a favorite line or two that you'd like to pr- uh, pick out? This, w- this was your, uh, your, your comedy article, I would say, right? One of your top comedy articles that you put yeah. together each year. Actually, Scott, it's a lot of fun, but I will say this. It's one of the most difficult things to write that I do all year. It's not your standard article. And the problem with writing something like this is you're taking 30 teams. Some of the jokes will land, some will not. And I try to vet them as much as possible with our other writers. And I have an editor that I go to and she will tell me every year, uh, not about, not this one, not one's offensive, no. <laughs> and we try to get to the right place. But it is a lot of fun. And it actually allows me to have some fun with people and some pointed criticisms in a way. But at the same time, inform people as well. For instance, in the Blue Jays one, I'm not sure fans are aware, the average fan is aware outside of Toronto, that they have an entirely new outfield dimension this year. They changed the dimensions, they changed the sizes of the walls, etc. And the other thing I don't know that fans were aware of, because I was not aware of this until I did some games at Chase Field during the WBC, their roof is a problem. They can't really open it or close it with fans in the stands because there are cables that I guess are not fully functional or at least they're worried about the integrity of these cables and they don't want something happening with the roof while fans are in the stands. So you get to some of these things in the article too and you can point out some things, but it's just a fun exercise and it's a goof. I'm not pretending to be (laughs) anything close to serious. One of my favorite ones, I guess, was the Mets one where I said that Cohen buys the Dominican Republic, like the entire country of the Dominican Republic, and then the small market owners get mad, so he buys Venezuela in response. And that's the kind of the spirit of the, what, what we're talking about here. It's not serious, and I'm sure people will get offended regardless because people always get offended by everything, but it's just a fun kind of thing. Can I- I'll have a more serious Storylines article tomorrow. Can I add two to your list? Do you mind? Or is that offensive? (laughs) Go. Please, no. Welcome. Okay, so this is my prediction for opening day. AJ Pruszynski is going to throw a strike on opening day, but rip off his White Sox jersey to reveal a Cubs jersey on underneath. Oh. And Todd Frazier is going to be warming up in the cage underneath, and he's going to be like, yo, let me get a bat. And they're going to see him hit off the tee and get a one-year, one-and-a-half million-dollar deal, and Todd never comes back on the show again this year. <laughs> there we go. I'll take that. <laughs> well, one of those things Both Ken knows cool. tr- could happen. One of them he knows would never happen. <laughs> <laughs> well, awesome. like AJ, it. the I only like thing it. about yours would be it would be the ultimate heel move. No. It would kind of be in character with some of the other stuff you know, but you would never do it. Now, Todd <laughs> – that's a cool one, too. And, guys, I don't know if you saw the other night, but one of my favorite moments already of this season was Romo's farewell in San Francisco. That was so well done, and he is such a unique character in the game. He's had such a great career, such a great story, really, from where he came from. Kind of a nothing prospect. That was really cool. So maybe Frazier has that in him, man. I don't know. Ken, Ken keep it on the One and a half mil, though? One and a half mil is not going to do it. No. Todd, let me be your agent <laughs> on that one. <laughs> One half yeah. on that. <laughs> Agreed. Ken, Ken, on this article on the Athletic where you posted it, you're talking about Frazier coming out of retirement. Some of the highlights for me. I, I want to start Vegas to the A's. That's get, probably going to happen. So I don't know if that was a that was more of a yeah. A, but the way he wrote it, yeah, was that's good. more of a like, uh, this is going to come down. So I'm just going to put it out there. And yeah, but you've got to give prediction. context. He he said the the owner John Fisher is buying a ten million dollar home in Vegas. Yes. Planted in Vegas. Planted in Vegas. Yes. yes. Now that's or- not true. That's not now. There's a whole <laughs> one thing, AJ. Before you get going more, I try to put like a shred, a kernel of truth in all of these. That's kind of how I try to do it. So people think, hmm, that's kind of weird, but uh, it's something to that. Well, yeah, but that's going to happen probably more than likely <laughs> that they're going to move to Vegas. The Rockies one about the Rockies ones about the fans protesting they can't drink enough. I was thinking maybe a different uh, something they were 
protesting True. they couldn't get enough of. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, maybe. Yeah, Denver. I could have done that. Bo- Bochi and the Rangers, he wants all the ex-Giants to come back. Bumgarner, Kane, Romo come out. That was that was pretty funny because after DeGrom, hopefully he doesn't get hurt if he stays healthy, but he does. He's going to be asking for some people. Uh, Ron Washington, talking about Frazier coming out, and you wrote, let me play MF and short style. I'll just play it. If you've ever been in a Ron Washington meeting when he was yes. the manager of the Rangers, the way he would say it, MF was every other word. This MF and MF and MF and MF. I mean, the whole speech for 30 minutes. He'd be perfect on this show. It would be amazing. And then the Houston Astros is relevant because we had Evan Drellick on here, and I'm reading the book right now. Jim Crane concedes that winning doesn't fix everything and has Drellick throughout the first pitch at the World Series. I don't think Evan Drellick's allowed in Houston after reading the, the first <laughs> yes. few chapters that I've already read. Well, that one was kind of my personal favorite in some ways because I'm tight with Evan. We worked on the Astros scandal story together, and his book is great. And I, I encourage people to read it because it's not just about the cheating. It's about the whole culture that led to a point where that team – was in a place where they thought, okay, this was okay. And it was that more than anything that made that book so compelling to me. It was about how the Astros got from A to B, how it was possible for them to get to A to B, from A to B, just based on the way the culture of the organization had evolved. And I recommend it to everyone. And I don't think Jim Crane is going to invite Evan to throw out the first pitch of the 2023 World Series, <laughs> but I'd be there for it. Put it that way. <laughs> hey, Ken, let's get back to a little more serious and a little more baseball. We've been talking about predictions. Um, yep. I don't know if you let the cat out of the bag about your predictions yet, but I would love to hear a- um, anything that you can let us know, like your predictions, World Series prediction, maybe a division winner. Um what, what, do you, what do you think on that? I would love to know who you think is going to be in the World Series, who you think is going to win the World Series, um, if, if you're allowed to do that. I'm allowed to do it, but I will warn everyone listening, my predictions, regular season, postseason, awards, every year, they suck. My <laughs> predictions are always wrong. I mean, I'm the, I'm the worst at this. And actually, one of the reasons I started writing the funny column was because I'm like, uh, they're making me write predictions. I might as well just have some fun with it. So exactly. I have the Astros over the Braves, but I have no idea what's going to happen. And yeah. actually, as I say in this article, you tell me who's going to get hurt and you tell me who's going to get traded. And maybe I might have yeah. an idea who's going to win the World Series. But really, the beauty of our sport is that there's no way to know. And no. things will happen that we can't anticipate. We can't anticipate even which players will get traded. A year ago at this time, if I had told you Juan Soto's getting traded to the Padres in July, you would have said, Mm -hmm. you're nuts. No one would have thought that. No one would have thought the Nationals were going to offer him $440 million for 15 years, which is what triggered the whole thing. So I don't need to tell you guys you know it better than anyone because you played the game, but this game is just impossible to predict. Now, do we know the A's and the Reds are not going to meet in the World Series? I think we know that. But can I tell you the Mets, Braves, Phillies winner? No, I can't tell you that. Dodgers, Padres, can't even tell you that. AL East, Blue Jays, Rays, Yankees, Orioles. Who knows? So many things will happen, and that's the beauty of it. That's why I love the start of every season because the 30 soap operas are all about to unfold right in front of our very eyes. Who's your MVP? Give me your MVP if you had to choose one now. Everybody healthy. Who would be your MVP? Certainly Otani in the American League. And you could argue he should have won it last year. That's a debate for another time. And who knows? That's a personal preference thing. Mm -hmm. And I see Acuna coming out of it and having a big year. I don't know if he'll win MVP, but Freeman is gone. Swanson's gone. They have Olsen, of course. They traded for Murphy. But Acuna really is the centerpiece of that club. He's healthy again, fully healthy, back from that knee injury. And I just expect he's going to do big things. So I would guess he'd be my choice in the National League. Ken, Ken, you and I have argued about the MVP on television before. And uh, you can't be on a losing team and be the MVP for me. So we're not going to get into that. We'll get into it another time. (laughs) What? 
you you know everything about Major League Baseball, a lot of it. You can't make predictions, you said that, but you know a lot of the rules and what happens and with the new schedule. Explain this to me and the fans out there. You're doing the Yankees-Giants game on Saturday, is that correct? Giants at Yankees? Yes. And they have Friday yes. off? They play Thursday, have Friday off, play Saturday? Yes. I'm doing the Phillies at the Rangers on Saturday. They play Thursday, have Friday off, play Saturday. Why in the world does Major League Baseball have a team that plays indoors, have Friday off after they have opening day on Thursday? Why don't they just play? Now, I'm happy because we're going to get Wheeler and Ivaldi as a pitching matchup. But why in the world do they do that? They have these games where domes and warm cities, they ha- they give them a day off after you start. Why not just let's go? I get it, AJ. I get what you're saying. And the entire reason to have an off day after opening day is in case of inclement weather and a postponement. When you have a dome stadium, that's not a problem. So I'm not sure the logic for that. Maybe it has to do with the fact that they do it for pretty much every team and they figure it's just more consistent that way. I don't know. But that is a very, very legitimate question. I just don't. Power outages, just in case. (laughs) The you thing never is, know. as a player, and I think Todd and, and Eric will, will back me up, once you get the season started, you're ready to go. Of course. Let's go. We don't need the day off right away. Yeah. I understand the day off because there might I – mean, it happened to us a few times where it's too cold in Chicago or somewhere we are, we got rained out, snowed out, whatever, and you need you needed the next day. But they're building these games in Arizona and Rangers and some of these different places. Why not – let them play four games in a row or three games in a row. It just does to me. It's just bad scheduling, but I don't know. I have no idea. That sounds. Like, I mean, I am interested yeah. to see how the more bad schedule plays out. That's mm-hmm. going to be really an interesting aspect of this season. We've talked a lot about the rules, of course, but the fact that division opponents are going to play each other thirteen times, down from nineteen, that's a huge change in the game and a huge boost. For teams, for instance, like the Rays, who are playing in a very difficult division, they don't have to play their division opponents as often. The other part of that, of course, is that every team will play every other. We have not seen that ever in this sport, and that's going to be a a refreshing thing, too. The season, because of all this newness, really is more intriguing than most, and I can't wait to see how the clock plays out. I can't wait to see how the two disengagement rule plays out. All of these things are going to be fascinating. They're going to be bumps along the way, I'm quite sure. But it seems to me the idea, certainly, is to get the game to a better place. And I expect that it will get to a better place. And that's going to be great. Ken, you won't be able to get your hits in in between pitches anymore. So no more, <laughs> we don't need no more Ken Rosenthal on the sideline. You're out. <laughs> AJ, actually, that's a legitimate concern. <laughs> and mostly, when I talk, AJ, you know this, and fans probably can pick up on it too if they're really paying attention. I'll come on between batters. I'll come on in foul balls, maybe after a walk. That's the most natural times, or those are the most natural times for me to come on. But in this scenario, when there's 15 seconds between pitches, in the regular season, sure, I can talk over pitches. It's not the end of the world. Postseason, can't do that. Can't miss a pitch. So it's going to be an adjustment I would expect from me. And actually, AJ, I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on how it's going to be for you as an analyst because you won't have time to necessarily see a replay. You won't have time to necessarily set up the next pitch. It's a different way of broadcasting that we're all going to have to get used to. I'll let you know on Monday after I do my first game, Ken. I'm going to need (laughs) time to digest it. I'll let you know. You thought about it, though, right? I have. I actually you have. Give it a thought. Because when I watch these games and I hear them talk, they have to talk over so many pitches, which has always been kind of the no-no. You don't want to talk over the pitches in case something happens. But if you're trying to explain something in 15 seconds or 12 seconds or whatever it is, it's going to be tough. It's going to be in a, definitely an adjustment. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. And I expect, actually, I was talking with someone from Fox about this this morning. I expect that all of the broadcasters, local, national, will figure it out and will fall into the proper cadence. But I don't know that it will be easy, and I don't know that it will be necessarily smooth. It's going to be an adjustment for everyone, including play-by-play guys. They have a different job now, too. So it's going to be something, Scott, that I think 
will be interesting for people who like that stuff to follow all year long. The balanced schedule. Which which of the teams have you heard from when talking to front offices are like, oh, well, this is going to help us because we are a – you had said the Rays, you know, they don't have to play in the East, but is it middle-tier teams? Are the bottom feeders, are they like, oh, great, now we got to play – this team out of the central, you know, is it going to, what, what organizations are they, are they making moves to like deal with this or are they just kind of, eh, we'll see what happens. I don't know that they're making moves, Eric, to deal with it. I don't know that you can be that smart. Right. But for each team, the circumstance is different. Now look at the Cardinals, for example, they play in a weak division, right? In their perfect world, they play the Pirates 19 times and the Reds 19 times and go from there. It's a little bit different for them now. Now, they'll still play some weaker teams out of the division in some of those games that are made up. The A's, for instance, in the American League. But for a team like that, I would imagine they'd rather just keep it the way it was and play the weaker teams in their division. For some of the... Small market teams in stronger divisions, like we mentioned, the Rays, it's a boon. I would expect for the Marlins, who are trying to make their way and scratch and claw on the NL East, it helps as well. They don't have to play the Mets, Phillies, and Braves and get worn out 19 times each. But, again, it will depend on team strengths, and it will depend on just how they're playing. Remember the schedule. You guys know this. The schedule matters. It definitely matters, but if you're not playing well at the particular time that you're running into a weaker team, you're going to get beat. And we go through this every September when we're talking about, oh, this team has the strongest schedule, this team has the weakest, and yet you'll see things happen that don't necessarily coincide with that logic. So I think we'll just have to see how it all plays out. From a fan's perspective, the most interesting thing, in my opinion, is if you are, for instance, a Pittsburgh Pirates fan, you will see Otani play your team this year and every year. And every other year, it will be in your home park. That's pretty cool. That's a huge win in my mind. That is a ben huge Ro- win. That ben alone. Rosenthal predicting Otani not signing with the Pirates, just FYI. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> really going out there. Yeah, I have predicted that. <laughs> <laughs> that actually was one of my favorites in that article. Pirates I'm comfortable offered, with that one. Yeah. 25-year, $100 million offer to uh, Brian Reynolds, $95 million of it deferred. <laughs> so we'll finish with that. And, and Ken, we'll, let's throw up the promo because um, AJ was complaining that he wasn't getting enough of his morning. So 1 to 3 Eastern time beginning tomorrow for the entire season. Accommodate to get more of the player, uh, current player guests on there too. So Ken, uh, just so you know, we all get a little more rest now thanks to AJ's complaints about uh, the show being too early. One to three next time we'll see, I think, is, is Friday. So enjoy your opening day. All right. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Ken with us all season long. Um, yes. That article, if you haven't read it on The Athletic, it's good. is great. It's really funny. And the Otani Giants part where Otani says, tells the Giants it's fake. Otani tells the Giants don't bid on them because they have a history of having big contracts and reneging. It's pretty good. By the way, fun fact, this is for Kratzy. I looked this up. So Key Brian Hayes has the largest Pittsburgh Pirates contract of all time. Do you know before that who had the biggest deal in team history for the Pittsburgh Pirates? Anyone have a guess? Andrew McCutcheon? Nope. Way before that. Barry Bonds. Uh, nope, after that. I'll give you a hint. Ward. What was that nope. Ward's guy name that hit the ball into the river? Daryl Ward. Darryl Ward. Darryl no. Ward. It was in 2000. Um, one of the most notable Pittsburgh Pirates players in modern Jason history. Jason Kendall. Jason Kendall. Oh, I was thinking of him. I couldn't in get the darn name out of my head. 2000, Jason Kendall signed a deal <clears throat> for six years, 10 a year, like Kratzy said. 10 a year, 60 mil. Oh, 60 mil. Okay. Six years, 60. Say. In 2000, nobody topped that on the Pirates until the uh, long-term extension from Key Brian Hayes. They basically, someone had to finally be sat down and say, hey, you've barely played so far, less than two years of service time. We'll give you 70 mil plus a club option, the whole deal. How did they not do this that. with a Garrett Cole? They had Garrett Cole. They had Andrew McCutcheon. Andrew McCutcheon won the MVP. Probably would have been a good guy to offer uh, significant Russell money Martin to. they had for a while. There's some guys. They had some dudes. I would love to talk to Pirates ownership. That's probably my dream 
uh, interview. Pirates ownership over yeah, A's me, ownership. Me too. Uh, yes, Pirates over A's. Reds ownership. I know what the A's deal is. They're trying to move. Pirates aren't going Reds? anywhere. Red, he's a good interview. Angelos is a good interview. A lot of them are listed in Ken's article too, which which is incredible. Um, so anyway, um, also today I forgot to mention former Orioles general manager Dan Duquette is going to join us pretty soon, about 10 minutes from now. We'll have Dan. Um, he's going to talk about the baseball. He's got a company, actually, that's working on making a more universal baseball, like a more uniform baseball. And uh, also, we'll get some some GM perspective from him as well. Um, let's get back to uh, where we were at the beginning. First up, I wanted to show this. It might take a minute to, to cue it up, but Ken was referring to Sergio Romo. That was really well done. I wanted to cover it yesterday. We didn't have time. But he, he shows up for the last uh, for his last game, an inning exhibition game. And here's the tweet. And if you're listening on the podcast, it's Alex Pavlovich of NBC uh, Sports San Francisco. Every time a kid asked Sergio Romo for an autograph in spring training, he asked them to sign his hat first. He wore this to the mound tonight, which is the hat that's signed by all the kids that asked him for autographs in spring training. Super cool. I got a few texts from people that weren't even necessarily baseball fans that were like, did you see this? It's great. The whole thing with Sergio Romo, the way the Giants did, they let him come to camp for a little while. He kind of got able to pitch, and he goes out there to pitch back in San Francisco for his last outing. The only thing that wasn't cool about it, he got called for a pitch clock violation <laughs> before he threw a pitch. Like, what are we doing, umpire? This come is on, meant man. to be kind of a, a, a cool thing he's doing. Instead, he gets pitch clock. They had Hunter Pence come take him out of the game. It was a really cool moment. This is the way guys should go out that are legends in their organization. And it was a game that didn't mean anything, the Bay Bridge series between them and Oakland and San Francisco. So kudos to you, San Francisco Giants, and congratulations, Sergio Romo, on a great career. Nobody else Sergio, has anything on it? Yeah, no. Nah, it was – he hit the nail on the head. It was a great, great thing to do. They should do this with more with guys more often, to be honest with you. <clears throat> I thought kind of last year how Pujols kind of went out like – you know how the other teams give gifts and all that kind of stuff. I, I thought they should have did a little bit more for him, especially what he did in the game of baseball. But, yeah, doing this, especially with a guy, I would say guys have been there for six to eight years with an organization who've done either won a World Series or helped them get to the World Series. I think they need to do this a little more often. And it's, it's good for the fans, too, because it brings back some good memories. Uh, this was our guy, you know, 10 years ago that dominated this. It's, uh, it's good stuff. We just talked about drawing a line. Organizations draw lines for amount of money. Todd Frazier, you just said you wanted to give a middle reliever gifts whenever he went around the, the league. Wait a second. Where do we draw the line on who gets gifts? Shouldn't wait, you have wait. to be I like know, a first I never pal- said a, I never said a middle reliever. I don't know where Sergio that came Romo. Were you talking about Sergio Romo? I said Albert Pujols. So you oh, Albert, no, wax. but then you said you uh, you thought get the that, wax out of your no, ear. No, you said you thought Sergio <laughs> Romo should have been given a little more fanfare. I did not say that. Okay, we can then rewind I that. I apologize. Yes. I misheard. But I, I said other players from other teams that have been with organizations for more than six and eight years should get more love from that team. Like what I agree Sergio with that. Got. Now that I do agree with. Yes. I yes. think. I um, mean, B. Crawford's the last one left, and it's like you know, I, I, I think the Giants have done it. I mean, I think they are. They had quite a run there with those guys. Brandon Belt's gone. Posey's gone. Pence was Pence was there for two of them, but like they they have quite a tradition there, and those those guys those guys built that. Whether you think Sergio Romo was like a corner piece of it, the dude threw the last piece, last pitch of the World Series. Like this guy was a closer, one of the one of the top closers, not elite, but top closers. I love it, and it's good that you know they're still able to. You know, keep guys like that around and and give them give them something that hopefully he can pass on to the next generation of Giants players. And he also experienced a pitch clock violation before he got out. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Why not? It taste everything. I wonder if he did it on story. purpose. That would have been funny. The video didn't look like he did it on purpose, no. but I think that would have been hilarious if he was like, "I got to get myself a pitch clock violation at least." I, I would. I, I would don't think, think that was. I don't think he was thinking anything about that. No, I would think he it, just no. didn't even realize. But I think someone cool. should have reminded him. I wasn't, <laughs> and I wasn't trying to disparage Sergio Romo's career. He had an unbelievable career. Three World Series. Oh, middle reliever, Sergio. He was Sergio mostly Romo. a middle. He was a seventh and eighth inning guy. Look setup. at his. I'm looking at his baseball reference. Yeah. He had one year with 38 saves. Yeah, he was. He was a setup. So he had one. He was. That's a middle reliever. 
That's, no, that's, that's a, a back guy. end. That's, middle reliever to me means like you're pitching the fifth, sixth, maybe a little seventh action nowadays. Okay. He was a reliever. High leverage reliever. Okay, that's fine. Maybe I, <laughs> How about that? I termed it wrong. How's that? Middle yeah. reliever is uh, not enough. Uh, that's like you're, you're kind of like a low level reliever. Well, I didn't he mean was it was disrespectful. I'm just saying he wasn't Trevor Hoffman, who we talked about yesterday. Sure. He wasn't Brian well, Wilson. He, he's not a Hall of Famer. I but middle reliever. He had an unbelievable had career for a guy that, that really had no fanfare. Wasn't a huge prospect ever. He goes out, wins three World Series, pitched 14 years. Good for you, Sergio Romo, for them to do what they did. Mm -hmm. Cheers to you. When, um, I, when I think about Sergio, I think uh, the first thing that comes to me, the World Series, of course, but whenever he, he had his hood up. Uh, in the WBC. In the, World, in the WBC <laughs> after them in Canada had their little tussle. And he's walking around with his hood, man. I was laughing, man. That, that's him ready to go. He's ready to fight. Love it. Love it. So a future Hall of Famer now has, I guess, a legendary golf course to show off. Um, oh, here it is. We got a little sound with it, too? Mike this Trout. Unbelievable. unbelievable. It's called uh, Trout National, the Reserve. Oh, my God. An 18-hole golf course along with a cutting-edge practice range, short game area, according to release. And he was he was teasing it on his social media. He's like, I got big news. And if you're listening right now, it says Trout National Reserve 2025, also five-star lodging and a wedding chapel among its amenities. Construction's beginning this year. Private club, which I'm sure AJ will get invited to, is anticipated to open for members uh, in 2025. Raise, you got the inside scoop on this thing? Uh, a little bit. A little bit. I talked to him the other day, man, when it first came out. I said, dude, I'm curious. What the heck's going on there? He's like, don't say nothing. I'm building my own golf course uh, with the help of uh, Tiger Woods and his company. Um, <clears throat> you know, that wedding chapel is pretty cool. They, they designed it perfect because his wife, Jess, uh, is a wedding planner. So she's got her gig there. They got the resort there for the boys. They got the lodging. They got everything. And uh, there's going to be a hole, a Mike Trout hole, where basically where you want to hit it. Um, it's like a par three uh, hole. It's, it's, he's, he's designed this, Tiger Woods and his company, and Mike, designed this perfectly to fit for his needs and uh, for everybody else's. So it's about an hour and 20 minute drive from me. And I told him, man, just give me that gold card so I know who to call when I need to go. And we started laughing. But it's going <laughs> to be, uh, it's going to be, I mean, try calling yourself. I call the local golf course here. It's called Bailey Bailey Golf Course. I call it Bailey National just because it sounds better. So I think Trout National, man. Hopefully to have some uh, PGA tours there. I mean, that, eventually, I think that's that's the goal too as well to have stuff like that. But it's going to be an exceptional golf course. I couldn't be more excited because it's right down the street from me. So AJ, I'm not inviting you yet because you need to earn that up here in Jersey. <laughs> I'll give you a call in about six years. He has to say something nice about Rutgers basketball. Otherwise, he's yeah, never going to that damn Jesus. course. Wait, Rutgers has sports? <laughs> <laughs> not so, getting in. Okay, this is great. Having Mike <laughs> Trout, Tiger Woods. But there's only one major problem with this, Todd. It's in Jersey. Who in the New hell Jersey? wants to go to Jersey to play golf? Uh, no, Can't play six out. months out of the year. Bro, Build we this got thing some down here golf. in Florida. Well, we got better golf courses in Florida, dude. I mean, honestly, listen. Just look at the list. Top one I mean, all just, over New Jersey. Oh, here, here comes a guy who lives in Pennsylvania chiming thank in you. now, too. I live like four listen, minutes to, from New Jersey. <laughs> I go to golf courses in Florida. Golf, it's cute, but nothing's going to lure me to go back there. Like, New Jersey's got, oh, man. All right, so name um, five five in New Jersey. Pine Valley. Okay. Pine Valley, Baltusol. Um Trump. I got to go over the list, but Trump I haven't golf. I haven't golfed at any of them yet because I'm I'm not worthy yet. I, I'm still doing stuff, but I will. I'll, I'll get you the list. Let me Liberty, look it up. Liberty in Jersey. Liberty National. Liberty National. Yep. Trump's two courses in Trump in New Jersey. Yep. There's two. Yeah. So you got five. That's five already. Okay. Boom. AJ helped, but yeah, no. That, it, it's thank a, you. AJ knows solid, more than uh, I do. That's pretty sad. <laughs> I play golf. AJ gets around the courses. I play golf. This He's is, a lot, a lot this better a golfer flex. than me, too. This is, this is like, is this not the ultimate flex by yes. Trout, though? Yes. Yeah. It's unbelievable. Like, there's not one person who's like, man, that's kind of like a, that's kind of a douchey move. That's kind of not. Like, no. everybody's like, dang. I'm, I, I golf with a guy. His dad owns a private course. When I say a private course, this guy's dad and his business partner own this course. That's it. What's it called? I can't tell you. That's how that's how private it is. 
Wow. He has a strip. He has a strip in Maryland that they fly planes into, and they only bring business people in. It's a fl- it's an ultimate flex. It costs like however many million. They Here's do have the water flight. there too. Oh my God! <laughs> you ain't doing that in Jersey, <laughs> Frazier, right now. Yeah. <laughs> Watch out for the crocodile by your feet. That's the, yeah, or the snake. Oh, you're crazy! Place. Listen. You know what kind of freaking animals are in that damn pond or oh. river? You're, that, that was an idiotic move by you. What? You almost lost the leg there. <laughs> did you, did you <laughs> what, see what, the picture of the snake you? I saw, the water moccasin I uh, saw this morning? Just take the drop and move on. No, dude, I was there. getting a stroke on that hole. No, that was that was no. serious. Did you win the hole? Hey. No, he pushed. But it was worth just it. Just the net. Hey, I, I looked up a couple. Quail Ridge, Pine, Pine Brook, Knob Hill. There's, there's, oh, nah, the list goes yeah. on and on. Okay. Colts Neck so, Country Club. Yeah. You ever heard of a place called Due Process? Due Process. Yes, I've never golfed there, dude. I've always wanted to golf there, and I. Well, still I know people, Frazier, but guess what? Like you said, you ain't invited. What about me? <laughs> I'll be there. Don't worry. <laughs> I, hey, I've been invited there. I just, I just haven't had the time to go. Oh, okay. Two jokes that were thrown around on social media after that was posted by Trout. One was. Okay, if it is in Jersey, yes, it is cold in the winter, so he's not playing there. They're like, is he trying to get traded to the Phillies at some point in a couple of years? Because otherwise, when's he playing at that course? Seriously, I mean, it's baseball season. By the time he gets home, Post-season. it's cold. It's but postseason, and that's no. the setup for the <laughs> other joke. For the other joke was. Well, he always gets an extra month of golf compared to a lot of other players because the Angels never make the damn playoffs. Listen, we play in, in – if it's 40 or over, you're playing golf up here, man. I mean, Eric, talk to – I mean, 38, I think about 38 degrees. Like, it's the best time. You're moving around, cranking a few uh, root beers, having a cigar. I mean, there's nothing better than that in the cold weather, bro. Just, ah, let's go crank. A- yep. AJ doesn't know anything about yeah, that. You know he's, why? He's because lucky. we have warm weather, and if it's 40 or below, if it's 65 it's or below, we're like, there's too many nice days. Why am I going to waste a day playing golf in this? You're not outside. Like this, outside you're like this outside tissue. From May till nice and September. soft. Yeah. AJ, yes. take that tissue, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, special guest joining us right now. Very excited to reconnect with him. Uh, longtime former general manager for a number of ball clubs, Dan Duquette. Right. Uh, look at this crew. I think Dan's looking at the screen like, what am I dealing with here, Dan? Great yeah. to have you on. <laughs> Excited to get into the company, too, and, and the baseball. But how you been? What are you up to? I'm good. How are you guys? Good to see you all. Uh, uh, let's see. I'm not formally getting ready for opening day, uh, but I'm, I'm doing consulting work. I have a couple of clients, institutional clients, and then I have one client that I want to tell you about. we got a real interesting project. And um, we just moved down to Wilmington, North Carolina. And uh, we've got two young boys in school playing ball down here. So I actually saw an old friend, Trot Nixon, last night where our boys paired up in a high school baseball game. So it was good to see Trot. And, um, you know, keeping in touch with my friends in MLB. Well, Dan, congratulations on the Red Sox Hall of Fame and, and the success you had, two-time executive of the year. Uh, the question I have is the best player you ever drafted or signed would be Vlad Guerrero, Pedro, um, who would it be dra- traded for? Yeah, well, I mean, thanks a lot. I appreciate that on the Red Sox, uh, AJ. It's good to see you. Um, my favorite player of all time that I traded for two times, of course, was Pedro. And probably the most talented amateur player that I signed was was Guerrero, right? I mean, Vlad had everything. Um, you know, I I, I think probably that the, uh, Pedro is my favorite of all time, and that was a huge trade, made a big impact on the Red Sox. He's still with the team, and um, you know, there's some other ones that were good, but my my my, my personal favorite is Pedro. Hey, Dan. Todd Frazier here, man. How's everything going, bro? Hey, good, Todd. How are you? Good, good, good. I want to talk about the baseball, man. Um, uh, we know you've been doing things that are trying to um, make the baseball better. For me, when I played over in Japan in the Olympics, the baseball over there was a lot softer. It had like a little uh, kind of lotiony feel, like lack of better words. 
have you have you like looked at that product too as well to see whether you know you can manipulate the ball a little better and uh, make it not as dry because when I it was softer and you know it wasn't as hard so so talk to talk to me about it. Well, I, I'm not I'm not an expert on manipulating the ball. Okay, there, 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 you know you know what I mean. Lack of better words. They have a lot more experience <laughs> and do it for a living than I do. Okay. Uh, what, yes. what, what I am trying to do is to help uh, get a consistent grip for the pitchers. So uh, I don't yeah. know if you can see this, but I, I, w I went to work for a company called Chalkless. Okay, Chalkless is a, is a grip enhancer, and it's a non-toxic product. It's a silica sand. Uh, women use it in makeup that they put on their face, and it repels water and it absorbs oil. So this Chalkless... Uh, I don't know if you can see it, but it, it's uh, you can see the white, yeah, white oh, yeah. sand coming out of my hands. You take a little bit, and you, you you rub it on your hands, and because it repels water, you can actually do an experiment where you can um, put your hands under water, and the water will just uh, run off your run off your fingers. If you put it on wow. your shoulder, and somebody threw mud at you, the mud would fall off your shoulder like you have a superhuman quality but we start i got involved with this company it's a it's a wilmington massachusetts company a couple years ago we did some testing in triple a uh with the worcester club and then mlb did some more testing out in the arizona fall league by preparing the baseballs so that they were prepared consistently so that the, the players have a consistent grip right that that's the uh, criticism that you hear, right? Particularly from the relievers and the pitchers, everybody. And so uh, we did continued with a test last year in Double A, uh, and we, we got some good results. MLB is continuing testing this year in Double A with another company, and we're continuing our testing with the Chocolates in the Atlantic League. But we're trying to find a solution for a consistent grip. You you see all these guys that get beamed and. Uh, you know, this is a problem that go, has gone back for several years. And it's interesting, uh, Todd, that you brought up the, the Japanese ball because this has been a, um, this has been a case of uh, Buck Showalter and I for a couple of years. We had, a, we had a hearing with Brian Mattis where he got busted for uh, sunscreen and rosin, putting it together. And we brought one of those balls in from Japan to the hearing. We said, MLB, you ought to take a look at these. This ball has a more consistent feel to it uh, mm -hmm. so, the, so the pitchers and the players can get a consistent grip. So uh, MLB is looking at it and trying to get it. Um, in, in my opinion, what they do now with the mud, that's an archaic process. Uh, you, you can't have the consistency that you can have from uh, preparing the balls with the, with another substance. And with with water and sand mixed into mud, you're never going to get a consistent product anyway. And I, I know it comes from New Jersey, Todd. Uh, yeah, I was going to say easy but, with that now. You, but, hey, easy. But you, you, you have to consider they're getting that uh, mud from the Delaware River, right? So what, what has been dumped into the river upstream? What, what, what kind of chemicals have been dumped into that river upstream? <laughs> hey, you're asking me if I said down. anything about it. I might not make the next show, so i got to be careful. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyway, the, the idea is to get a consistent grip, and, and that's what we're working on. This chocolate works for, for lifting. It works on platform tennis. We've got a couple of players in the NBA that use it because they have perspiration on their hands right when they get the ball. But uh, we think we have a good product and we're on to something, and we hope we can convince MLB to use it consistently. I know Crassie's going to follow on this, but what happened with the Mattis hearing? Like, what did the league say when you brought that <laughs> to the mix? Were they like, get out of here? Or no, did they actually, they, 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 um, the, Buck's been a big proponent of a, of, the, of a better grip on the ball. And I think that was uh, uh, a message point for them to take a look at it. Uh, they, since they've since then they've got a lot of feedback from the players, right? And I think they're working with the players' association to to find a solution. I had a good conversation with Chris Capuano, right? He's a he's a veteran major league pitcher, and we showed him our product, and 
got him to understand the uh, the pluses of it. And then uh, did did a little work last year with Rich Hill, right? I mean, who's who's thrown more balls than Rich Hill over the course of his career to uh, help us develop a solution? So uh, I think we're going in the right direction. Hey, real quick before you go, Kratzy, let's run that Rich Hill sound that we have. So we had him on about a week and a half ago, and that's actually what what helped us spark the knowledge of what you guys have going on there. We were talking about the inconsistent baseball in the big leagues, and here's Rich Hill with an answer on that. Dan Duquette has a company out there, I think, called Chalkless, and they've been doing a great job and work with trying to get a consistent baseball. And I think just as a hitter wants to get his consistent swing off, uh, a pitcher wants to get a consistent throw off. And as you guys know, uh, playing in Florida or playing in uh, Arizona or Chicago uh, in the middle of July, it's like dunking your hand in a bucket of water and then grabbing a baseball and trying to make you know a consistent pitch. Dan, I got a question Expert, for you. I was, yeah. up in, I, was, I was up in Worcester when you guys were you know, rubbing those balls up. I was working with the Red Sox at that time. The big talk, because they would do it like the sixth through the eighth inning, and then they talked with the pitchers that came that came in in those games, and they were like, the big talk the next day in the clubhouse was, all right, well, how can we manipulate this thing? How can we take this chocolate <laughs> stuff and add – and they were talking about adding tobacco to it. They were talking about adding, you know, anything to it. How have you guys – how are you guys going to – stay away from that because it's all about gamesmanship. Like who can use this chocolate stuff and get an edge? Yeah. That, well, I mean, that's a good question, Eric. And, um, you know, the pitchers are always going to be trying to get an edge, right? Uh, that, 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 that's what they're paid to do. But if we could compare with a consistent process, all, all the baseballs and had a good consistent grip on them, I think you'd see less manipulation of the ball. And, this um, chocolate formula, it'd be a lot easier to enforce foreign substances on this because the way it, it absorbs oil and repels water. So um, I think just the consistent process and preparing the balls, our engineers and scientists have worked on that for a year and a half. And, and I think we've got a much more consistent grip. As far as policing it, uh, that's, a, that's a problem for Major League Baseball, and you, you've seen some of the things that they've done. Uh, but really getting a consistent grip is, is what we're trying to accomplish. And I think that starts with a consistent um, process of how you prepare the balls, and certainly the consistency of the substance that you put on the balls would have something to do uh, with having a consistent grip, too. Rich Hill told me that he liked the ball because he could backspin it, right? He could backspin his four-seamer with it consistently uh, just with the prepared ball that we gave him. And I, I think that's that's what the pitchers are looking for. And then these guys, they come in from the bullpen. You're going to see more problems uh, this spring, right? You get into the cold weather, and you have prepared these baseballs with mud and water, and then you get them into a cold environment, uh, Shea Stadium in, in April – or the wind coming in uh, at Fenway Park in April. And those relievers coming in, they're going to be looking for a consistent grip. They haven't had that many innings, and you're going to see some more guys get hit by pitch. So it, it's, a, it's a problem, and it's going to continue to be a problem until there's a consistent uh, process. There's a, there's a good um, consistent grip for, for everybody on the field. Well, Dan, you sold me. I just bought two uh, bottles of chocolates on Amazon as you were talking. For, for All right, high school team, so I'll, hey, I'll take a hey, cut. <laughs> you, you can use it in your golf game. I heard you guys talking about golf. Yeah. Some of these guys on the PGA like it. I'll also use it for tennis, which would be great because I have a hard time with sweaty hands down here in Florida where it gets warm, Dan, and like where Todd is in Jersey. <laughs> the Orioles, speaking about North, the Orioles, you're, you're one of your former teams, the Orioles, they, they're on the precipice of being, people are saying, of being a really good team, a playoff possibility team, yet they did nothing this offseason. They didn't sign anybody. They didn't make the big splash. They said they're going to do it. As a former GM and executive for the Orioles, is this par for the course with the Angelo family, or should they have done more? Well, I, I'm 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 one of those guys that likes to get after it every single season, right, and try to get the most out of it. The Orioles have a good core of young players. I think we left them some uh, some very good uh, 
players. Uh, and then they also had the opportunity to draft high in the draft for the last five years. So they've got the foundation of some really good players. Uh, when you get in that situation, you've got to add the veteran players, right? You know, they get the guys like Nelson Cruz that can help you uh, a- and show the young guys how to do it. That's probably the best way to go about it. But I wouldn't uh, sell the Orioles too short. They got some good young pitching coming and drafting high in the draft. They, they've added a number of players to the foundation that they had there. But, you know, if you're asking me, uh, I, I, I'd, I'd like to see the team get after it more aggressively and invest in the team because I think they have a really good foundation to grab the fans back. When, you know, when I went to the Orioles, they hadn't won in 14 years, and those fans were just dying to come out and support a contending team. I think those same fans will come out and support this Oriole team if they can get back into the top of the division. Well, Dan, though, they just didn't promote their number one pitching prospect, right? Grayson, Grayson Rodriguez. Rodriguez. They yeah. sent him to Triple A. So what message is that sending? <laughs> hey, we got these prospects. We're sending them to Triple A? Like, how about well, let's let this guy learn at the big league level? Grayson Rodriguez is going to be a good pitcher. Um, he's a very talented pitcher. And you, you make a good point because uh, where, where are the best resources to develop players around the industry, right? They're in the big leagues. Right. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see Grayson come up here uh, before too long. And when he does come up, he should have a big impact. D.L. Hall, he's got some great stuff, too. He needs to just be a little bit more consistent with his control. But I'm with you, A.J. You know, the player development, the best resource and the best place to do that is is in the big leagues. And if these guys are ready, they, they should certainly be on a big club. Hey, Dan, how do you think uh, Buck Showalter's doing with the Mets, man? I know you and Buck, long time together for a while. So what do you think about your man, Buck? How's he, how's he holding up over there? He, he looked like he had a pretty good year last year. And, yeah. um, he's, you know, I mean, the Mets have been very aggressive and, and uh, they've been trumping everybody with, the, with their money in the market. So they look like they're very strong again this year. I, I like the Yankees this year too, Todd. Um, I, I think, uh, this may be the year for the Yankees. They, 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 uh, I, I like their, I like their pitching and, uh, they got a good foundation and they got a couple of young players that I think are going to make a real good impact on their team. Would you win third executive of the year if you work for Steve Cohen? <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that, that's a, that, 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 that's an owner with a big checkbook, right? Now, uh, that, that, that's a long way from the uh, Expos when I was running the Expos, right? When, when our Major League payroll that year, we had Walker and Grissom and Alou in the outfield, I think, was less than $14 million. And uh, we, we had a terrific record. But the reason we had that is because we had a great player development operation. And, um, you know, the Mets are going to have to be good in player development, too. They, you know, you just can't spend the money uh, – at the top without having a foundation at the bottom. So, um, you know, but, but, you know, it, it's easier when you have the money, right? You, 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 you can make more mistakes, but I'm going to tell you the foundation of any good team. And all you guys know that comes from good scouting and player development. I've got two more. Cause we got to go over your former teams. So for Montreal, do you think there's a chance that they get a team at some point? We know there's going to be expansion at some point. Is it Montreal, but, They've got a good race going with Nashville, of course, Vegas, which I think the A's are going to go to and a few other cities in the mix. Yeah, I I don't know about I don't know about the Expos. I don't know about the city of Montreal uh, as a viable baseball market. There's a lot more uh, education there and there's some really good baseball fans. But if you look around, uh, MLB, I think, has some uh, really good choices in the States. Uh, Charlotte's a good choice. Portland's a good choice. You mentioned a couple of the others. Um, I, I got to think. New Jersey. That, yeah. Well, <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Yeah, why, why couldn't they have another team in New Jersey, right? Why couldn't yeah. you put a third team in New Jersey? Because it's New Jersey. <laughs> the Todd Fathers. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we got we got great spots. We got great spots. We go to we go to Trenton, get Trenton Thunder out of there, put a new stadium in there, something I mean, <laughs> right next to the jail. In there, jail. There's like a big jail in Trenton. Oh, you're pushing it. it. You're pushing it. Only the strong survive, bud. <laughs> hey, it, it, so, that's a huge that's a huge market, man. They could support another team. Dan, no, doubt. no. When you were with the Orioles, I was with the Red Sox in 2014. I'm still mad because you brought Nelson Cruz over. He hit a home run off us on opening day to, to beat us. 
The Red Sox, another one of your former teams, they didn't do much this offseason. They let Bogarts walk. Yes, they signed Devers. What are they doing in Boston? What's the what's the long yeah. play? Because it has to be a long play, right? Because they're not going for win now. It's obviously got to be a longer play. Yeah, that's that's a good question. I, I'm not sure exactly what they're doing in Boston. Uh, they might be biding their time until some of their young ball players come up. Um, you know, the, the the AL East, which you know, AJ is a is a tough neighborhood, right? That's a tough tough division. Uh, very competitive every year. And you can go from uh, first to last very easily in that division because they're all pretty good, right? They're all trying to compete, uh, uh, and they, you know they've got a lot of resources in that division. So, um, I, I like I, I, I like some of the young ball players the Red Sox have coming up in their minor league system, but I, I don't know if they're quite ready to contribute in the big leagues. Um, they, they, they've got uh, Mayer's got a chance to be a really good player. He's a uh, Mexican shortstop, right? He's part Mexican like Nomar was. Mm-hmm. And then, um, you know, they've got uh, Bayo's got a chance to be a really good pitcher. I know Pedro, that's one of his favorites. He worked with Bayo this year in the offseason. Um, but, you know, competing every year, it's kind of tough. You know, the fans in Boston, they don't like to hear about rebuilding, right? They, they like to come out and they see the star players every year and they like to see the teams compete. No, I'm, I'm with agree. you that they're, um, they're disgruntled, I would say. They want names, and they want stars, and they want to win every year. Yeah. Oh, they're well, that's spoiled, fair. too. Let's not forget, they're spoiled. Between the Patriots, the Celtics, and the Red Sox. Yeah, they're not used to having The last 20 years, years have been pretty damn good to be a Boston sports fan. Exactly. Yeah, the Bruins the Bruins have a great team, too. Oh, I forgot year, about the Bruins. Year in and year out. They, 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 they do a great job. I mean, if you grew up a sports fan in New England over the last 20 years, you were you were spoiled. You got about uh, over 15 championships between these teams. And, you know, I mean, Boston, they've won their share of championships, the Red Sox have. But the, the fans have high standards there, right? They, they love baseball, and people are miserable in New England when the Red Sox aren't competitive. Oh, no, I'm with you. Exactly. It, it gets cold fast up there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, yes, it does. It does. I'm saying. Hey, Dan, it was awesome to to reconnect, and thanks for enlightening us on, on the company. AJ's going to sell it all over Florida now. Um, and uh, bought, two, we'll, bought two bottles. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, we'll thanks a lot. Appreciate the opportunity. Great to see you guys. You too. All right. Have a good year. Take care. Thank you. Right, thanks, Dan, Dan Duquette with us, uh, former GM, Red Sox, Expos, he said Orioles. It best. What? He said it best, hey. by the way. Massachusetts slash Boston fans are so spoiled. So before they won in 04, I used to always say Yankees fans were the worst because they would get on you. And then once Boston won, when you'd go to Fenway, they just expected to win every World Series and every <coughs> single sport title. So when they were losing, man, those people were harsh. Listen, you said the Yankees fans were worse because they got on you. I mean, oh. How about when I was eight years old? I'd have fans get on me, bro. It's, I mean, it's only the strong survive. You're worried about a fan in major leagues get on you? I find that hysterical because you just couldn't handle it? No, I handled it fine. I It made me laugh. But I'm saying peop, the things they would <laughs> Eric, say. tell them, bro. When we were eight years old. The things they would this, say this in the Yankee Stadium about. were great. And then once the Red Sox won, they just were mean, though. And it made you laugh because they were talking about your mom and your dog and your kids yeah. and your wives and all that. But. Made you laugh. Had, I, Man, they're just downright had, mean people sometimes. We had dads fighting in the parking lot at eight, nine years old, bro. We're like, here we go. And I tell the kid, I said, listen, you and me next. Let's go. Like, what, what are we doing here? Like, that's the way it goes. <laughs> You're oh, next. Man. <laughs> hey, there's hey, is there do you guys think there's more energy of any place more than Fenway? Philly. No. Uh. I mean, on a consistent basis through no, ups yeah. and downs. Old like, Yankee. Old Yankee had probably was the one. Yes. But Old Yankee Stadium. The, yep, Fenway crazy. now is probably it for energy on a consistent. I agree, Crafty. I'm, I'm it, tailing you. I feel, I feel like during COVID, there no. was energy in the stands and there was nobody there. Like, <laughs> it just, it, I don't know, just you something about it felt that way. Well, the music, everything. We'll, we'll be telling again in a sec futures bets coming up before that there's one article i just wanted to touch on actually we we waited for you fridge because it was such a heated debate the other day 
Um, it's called Running Like Ricky. Uh, Ricky Henderson yeah. on MLB's new rules. You got to let these kids run. Brittany Giroli wrote the article in The Athletic. Britt, a friend of the show, said how many stolen bases would Ricky have grabbed, um, adding to his 1,406. And, and Ricky himself said about 1,600 or 1,700, yeah. which I actually thought was light on a prediction from him. I thought he was going to say like, 2000 plus but he's like and i don't uh, yeah. hold the last but he's saying you know, give me an extra four and a half inches <laughs> it's like I'm razor just, loves that four and a half inches <laughs> along uh, with the 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 lotion ball lotion <laughs> and manipulation I and couldn't. softer balls i mean eric said they put tobacco on the balls i was like here we go again i'm, I'm about to look I'm about, about to lose balls. it. Oh, I mean, these damn balls. Baseball is just the perfect setup for all of that. But, uh, but hey, anyway. I'll be honest with you, Scotty. Yeah. That's that's coming from Ricky, that's different because Ricky I thought would be like, oh, two, 22, 23, and put another thousand on there. But good for him for being honest. I, I agree with that number. I, I forget Ricky played for 25 years. He did. He played for, <laughs> for a quarter century. I thought Fraser was going to be honest with you. Before. <laughs> <laughs> it just is a lot. <laughs> yeah, again, I, I can't. I, I'm not even going down that street anymore. <laughs> you don't have to. <clears throat> Wait, but Fraser, while I'm laughing, g- give us your, your take on, on what Brittany put together because she's like, some of these guys are going to steal a lot more bags. And that's been a big debate. And I think even for people looking at over-unders on stolen bases, like where are these numbers going to go? Last year's stolen base leaders. And remember, Ricky went over 100 multiple times. Last year, the leaders, John Birdie, 41. Um, Mm -hmm. Jorge Mateo of the Orioles. Birdie on the Marlins wasn't even a full-time player. Mateo on the O's, 35. Cedric Mullins on the O's, they ran, 34. Rosarena on Tampa Bay, 32. And Tommy Edmond had 32 for St. Louis. Those are not on the individuals, but just for the sport. Those are pitiful numbers. We we need more. We're going to get more. But how much? How much more? Like, is the stolen base leader this year going to have 65? Is he going to have higher? Higher. What? No, so give me no the number. Way. What's no the number? Way. What's no the way. What's the leader? You know I'm I'm saying I, I'm not going to say 100, but I'm I'm saying I'm saying the stolen base leader is going to have over 70 stolen bases. I. Trey Turner might have 70 stolen bases. I mean, listen, Eric, you should be happy about that. Listen, this is, Cedric Mullins is a un, 34. These guys might even double their numbers. It's going to be – I think it's going to be really big. You guys might not agree with me. I think that f- the four and a half inches is huge, bro. You guys don't get that. You get that. That's this. Bang, bang. Look, bang, bang, play. Save. No here, out. <laughs> Bang, bang, four and a half inches. I'm telling you, man. It's If Billy Hamilton I love was still discussion. being a full-time starter, when he was with the Reds when I came Ooh. up, he'd be over 100 bags, bro. I'm telling you, man. It's going to be, steal, it's gonna be he, awesome. You got to steal first, though, at some point to get 100 bags. That <laughs> well, was Billy well, Hamilton. I didn't go ball. there. As, as usual, you, you always find a way to knock it down like that. Good for you. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> the difference is you're so you're saying, Todd, that John Birdie at 41 is going to double that to 82. Well, not Birdie because he, well, he said play the leader, though. Okay, but the lead, like, so Jorge, but Mateo he led the league with 41. I know, but you're being too literal here. Like, Cedric, Cedric Mullins, Mullins is good. I think Cedric Mullins and Trey Turner are going to have 70 plus. Wow. I, I, I'm not, I'm, was it fading that or whatever? I'm fading. Yeah, I'm fading that one. The difference between when Ricky Henderson played and what happens now. The pitchers are more aware of it, and they're so much quicker. You watch those old videos of Ricky Henderson, the pitchers are like out of the windup, and he's stealing second and third on the same pitch. It, it, but I, just, also, I also think there's going to be a lot more pickoffs at first because guys are going to try and be like, you know, I'm going first pitch because I don't. I, I think he's going to try and – I don't think he's you wanting can. to throw. because You only get two. Well, guess what? I'm go first pitch. All of a sudden, I'm gonna just you know what? Maybe time it up. I think there's gonna be a lot more pickoffs, in my opinion, too. Call me crazy, you'll see. You get a ton of back picks by catchers. By catchers, yeah, tons. And the catchers throw better, Kratz, than they did. I I think they throw better. We're better equipped to handle the running game, slide stepping, things like that. So I think that's why the numbers have fallen, along with the the philosophies that stolen bases don't matter and bunting. But I think the pitchers are just better at holding runners than they ever were. They I heard. I heard a guy that used to play with Ricky said when Ricky was like – when he was running all the time, he said, slide steps? There ain't no slide mm-hmm. steps. He yeah. created the slide step. He made pitchers vary their times. And I'm not going to – I'm obviously not going to agree with Todd, 
But I think we're <laughs> going to see team stolen bases go up because there's going to be guys that can get those bags. There's going to be guys like – like watch the Phillies last year. You know, JT Romuto had 20. I don't see JT Romuto having 35 bags this year because of the new, new, new rules. I see him, you know, maybe bumping from like 20 to 25-ish. But I see – Kyle Schwarber being able to take advantage of it. The teams that have guys who are like, hey, this guy is panicked about the move, we're going to go. We're going to go. We're going to take a chance because they're not going to be picking as much because they want those you know, disengagements. And I think it's going to be more of the 9 to 15 stolen base guys that are going to see the biggest percentage jumps in their stolen bases. The main guys, you're still going to be combating against it. You're still going to look over the dugout and, you know, the manager's going to be over there like, you know, this and giving you the sign. And you're like, oh, we're not throwing. This guy's not fast enough. That's where it's – that's where it's it's not going to be double the bag. It's not going to be 70-plus. I agree. There's going to be an uptick, but it's not going to be gigantic. Okay. Well, that's why. We want to see. Meaning gigantic – individually but teams yes and i think teams it, will be a big uptick. yes and i think it also lends to more hitting and running just mm-hmm. more action in general because teams are going to say well, we can take advantage of the shorter distance so which yeah, would mean, you rather which which prop bet would you rather take vogelbach getting his first bag of the year or somebody going over 76 bags vogelbach 76 bags yeah, ooh, that, that's actually a really good one. When you make a commercial, you have to you steal a base. You have to try it. If there will be a time in a game where they're up three or four, down three or four, late in a game, mid inning, middle relievers in, and he's going to go high leg kick, and Vogelbach's going to say, "Screw it, let's try it." But they're going to get him. No, he's, they're going to throw a slider in the dirt. He's going to guess slider in the dirt. Catcher's going to try to pick it, clank, stolen bases. Okay. Middle reliever, so like Jose Alvarado or somebody like that. (laughs) (laughs) Devon. Yeah. (laughs) Gregory Soto. Uh, Why is it always Phillies guys? I don't know. Those were the first ones that came to my mind. (laughs) Yeah, Joe Jimenez. Oh, man. Any back end guys. All right, ready? Let's do futures bets. Yes. Yes. Presented by... BetMGM. Let's yeah. go, baby. I love that logo, by the way. It is beautiful. The Lions got it going. Um, there it is. Look at this, too. Kratz, you see this? I see it. on the, What's that, the Dackboard? Yeah. Dackboard wow. Magic? Dackboard yeah, Magic buddy. right there. Okay, so let's start with, we're going to do four today. Home Run Leaders, AL Rookie of the Year, NL Rookie of the Year, and World Series winner, because we did our division picks already. Home Run Leaders, and you can go off the board if you want. MGM, BetMGM's got Aaron Judge at plus 550. Alonzo's at plus 900. Schwarbs plus 1,000. Jordan Alvarez plus 1,100. And Trout at plus 1,100. Who wants to take – I mean, Fraze, you won the Derby at one point. You got you to gotta yeah. start first. Plus, you got, you got Yank and Met at the top here. What are you doing? If, you, if you've got one, I give you 100 bucks. Where are you going here? You think there's good money somewhere? Listen – all those guys are great. I'm going off the board. Okay. Ooh. Guy that just got traded to a new team. The park is smaller. He's just going to lift and separate this ball, hit it 300 feet into the Crawford box. I'm going Jose Abreu as the home run leader this year. We got to find out what his odds are, and we can make some big bucks. Damn. I'm going off the board. Going Damn, off the wait, board. You're, going not, you're going not off the board. You're going off the planet. Hey, he could he could go oppo with the best of them too. You remember Jose Abreu? This is gonna be Dude, he hit his one little home coming run, out party. You know what? Half last year, I think he hit one home run in the second half last year. One. Well, guess what? Second one. half, smacking half. Who cares? It's a new season. <laughs> Jose Abreu. <laughs> you got a hundred bucks to spend to make a lot of money. We're going Jose Abreu. You, you, he's you ready for this? Really, he's gonna have a really good year this year, and he's one of my he's one of my picks to click in a lot of things this year. You ready for this? Plus. Yes. Ten thousand. I, I don't That's see why awesome. you wouldn't put a hundred on that, especially playing at home. Um, what, eighty-two games? What, eighty-one you're games? Crazy, it is. You're crazy, Fresh. You're crazy. It ain't like guaranteed rate up there in Chicago is just either way. Kauffman Stadium in Kansas City. I mean, it's it's. What? It's, why wouldn't you put fifty bucks on that? Because I'd rather give it to uh, AJ. <laughs> for, for <nothing. laughs> he loves getting my free money. Yeah. Why wouldn't I? Because 
because Frage, I'm I'm gonna take a guy on the board that's got better odds. Much, I mean, better well, odds. You, you could you could take you could take your eleven hundred dollar winner. I want the I want the ten hundred thousand dollar winner. I put fifteen homers last year, Frage, and he's thirty six <laughs> years old. I like Jose Abreu, and I agree. I, I could see him hitting twenty five, hey, but he's not. Did anybody have, pick Florida? Did have, anybody pick? Last year, wait, hold on. Schmeck it now. Did any, anybody pick Florida Atlantic to go to the Final Four? Come on, man. You got to decide what you want. I'm going with my gut. I got a good feeling about Jose Abreu. I'm going to steroids legal again. <laughs> wow. There I'm sticking Stop. up. Hey, I'm sticking up. Scotty, for my boy just because you're wearing a size small. Some of you, <laughs> medium, baby. Some of you guys, Ooh. you guys have never gone to the casino with Frazier. Okay. Let me no. tell you, Frazier is an absolute baller in the casino. And when you hang out with Frazier in the casino, everybody wins. Frazier's not <laughs> afraid you. to win. So he's, he's looking to win the $10,000 because he's given, he's given good tips to the dealer. He's given good tips to, to everybody else that's playing. He's like, hey, I would double down on that. He's throwing his chips over there to help him double down. Todd's a guy you want to gamble with because he's going to go for the big – he's going to go for the big swing. So if – I hope – Abreu wins it because we all get paid then. Hell yeah. I mean, I'd rather go like Jordan Walker plus 20,000. <laughs> you, you would rather, but you've never played. So you, you stay in your I've lane I've never played. I play, wow. I play every Whoa. damn day. And I, I'll Let's do my go. pick in a sec. Kratz, you follow. Oh, wait. Jose Abreu hit 15 homers last year, four in the second half. That That's real cute. Thank you. Next. Okay. So Kratz, who do you got? Since Frazier Mike, doesn't want to hear any information. The National Trout. I think there is just – it's oh, – wow. I want him to play a whole season. You want a membership to his golf course is what you want. <laughs> <laughs> hey, raise your hand if you don't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. I got too many memberships. Keep your hands oh, down. Yeah. You know you want to be up there. Oh, I got a celebrity pro-am that I'm going to. Mike Trout hit 40 and 100 in, I think, 19 games last year. I just feel like there's going to be – he can just go into those. He can go into those stretches, and I, I really, I see, I see a shot at fifty for him. And I know that's that's high because if you've never hit fifty, like it's tough to do. But I think fifty could win it. We all see sixty-two, and it's like, oh, somebody's going to hit sixty. Like pump the brakes on that. And I see if I were to put it over under on homers for old Michael, I would go forty-eight and a half. Solid. Mm. Hey, and, and Trout's getting ten percent of the handle. It's a lot. Yeah, I mean, he's, he, those are good numbers. Eleven hundred. Yeah. Judge is the no for me because of last year. Uh, you just don't think he's going to do it again. There's a stat where there's only been a couple guys that after hitting sixty even hit fifty. Mm -hmm. So that's that's kind of an eye opening thing for me. I'm going Schwarby. I'm going Schwarbombs in Philly. Treasure loves the small parks. Mm -hmm. He's going to get to play every day. Like he's going to be swinging like for that. the fences. He hits home runs in every big game he plays in. Every big moment, he seems like he hits a home run. I just yep. think this is the year where he puts it all together, and there's going to be a lot of shore bombs in Philly. and No Harper, so he's going to have to swing for the fences a little bit more. How many do you think he's got? I think he can, he can hit 49 if you got Trout hitting 48 and a half. He's going to hit 49. <laughs> but my thing, my thing with Schwarber, they've been putting up – They've been putting up 40 home runs on his name since he came up with the Cubs. And before last year, you know how much his high was? 32. 38. No, well, that's way off 40. No, no, no. But I'm saying he's never he never reached 40. <laughs> yeah, and they sorry. were putting it on. I'm saying, like, I get it. When you when you hit 38 home runs, I don't know about this. Todd's the closest that knows about hitting 38 home runs. Like to find two more somewhere. It's tough to do. Like, it's a real – 40 is a real number, and he's only passed it once. Well, this is the year, 49. Not many people have been in that 40 rank. I know. There's only one on this show. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Facts. Hey, yeah. that's why he might be the expert, Jose Abreu. Mm -hmm. Shock the damn world. I tell world. you what, instead of that, you're 100, you're going to put on Jose Abreu. Just hand it over to me. I'll give him better odds. I'll double the odds. Oh. Yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait, wait, you hurt now. Let's we can't do listen. that. BetMGM, it's all going to BetMGM, okay? Yeah. Throw it in there. It's the fresh sponsor. I know where you were going, Kratzy, but but no. No, I'm saying uh, give I, it to me and I'll bet his I, money. I would double down. How about chance. this? By the end of the show and, and get the behind-the-scenes crew involved here, 
I'll add something to that. If if you're actually throwing a hundred on that phrase on a you, I'll I'll do something. I'm not I'm not going in the lake in, in AJ's lake and getting eaten by an alligator, but I'll do <laughs> something. I'll do something. I'm gonna leave it at this. He's been a 30 homer guy for monster, what is it, seven, eight for straight life. years until last yep. year. There's going to be at least 10 more home runs he hits in that stadium. I'm, uh, that's, the only, that's where I'm going with it. And you know what? You could disagree. I, I respect your, your opinions. I appreciate that, you. That's where I'm going with it. Uh, here's where you should have gone. Pete Alonzo, <laughs> plus 900. I think this is Pete's year. I think he's going 50 plus. I know I'm not mm. going crazy here, but 100 to win 900, yeah. yes, please. I, yeah, I'm, I'm I not like a huge judge guy on this one either. Obviously, he easily could do it again. My thing more with judges, I mean, he he's had a lot of seasons where he's he's gotten beaten up. And I think just last year, everything on his shoulders, he might miss a little bit of time. So for Pete, he's been pretty durable. He's a monster. I think he's going to hit uh, Kratz. If you want a number, I'll go 53 for Pete I'm Alonzo gonna, this year to lead the league. I think I that, that I'd buy that, right? I want that action. Pete was my second was my second choice, yeah. but I I don't know 53, 53 is it's big. It's yeah. big. I, take I think the he under can do just cuz of history. He's got a chip on his shoulder too. Everyone's getting contract extensions left and right and he's like, "Where's my bag?" So, mm-hmm. I think that helps too. You know, he's looking around. I mean, he deserves the big bucks, the 100, 200 plus whatever it is. So, let's go to rookie of the year, otherwise we're going to be here all day. AL rookie of the year, please. Gunnar Henderson's a pretty heavy favorite right now, plus 250 before the season starts. Yoshida for Boston at plus 600, Volpe plus 650, Hunter Brown's at plus 900, and Grayson Rodriguez plus 900, although like AJ said, he's not even starting the year up here. And then I did get a comment too. Um, Matt said, Grayson sucked this spring. This is in our YouTube chat right now in the live stream. He said he needed to be sent down. I don't think he recovered from the injury last year. So good That's little AJ's tidbit there. burner account right there. <laughs> That's burning Wait, AJ. What does that mean? Burner account? No, I'm, I'm All joking. right, you go first here. Who's AL rookie of the year? Where you put where do you see good money? I got to stick with Oh gosh. Well, you Brown, didn't decide yet? You're I did, but I kind of changed my, uh, Grayson Rodriguez is in AAA. Hunter Brown's hurt. Gunnar Henderson is the one that stands out to me because he's going to get the at-bats, and also Yoshida because he's in Boston. The thing that worries about me about Hunt, Henderson and Rodriguez is when Rodriguez comes up, they're going to split some votes. So that means one guy's left standing. It's Volpe. I've been on him since the first show of the year, first show of foul territory existence. So I'm going with Anthony Volpe. In New York, he's going to get the attention. He's playing shortstop, and I think he's going to do enough to earn the, earn the votes to win rookie of the year. Okay. I can buy it. I can see it. Yeah. Uh, power, speed, the whole deal. Um, I'm going to stay, I'll go second here. I'll stay in the division plus 600. Give me a little Masataka Yoshida. Okay. I, I was one of the haters in the off season, not about the player. I, I've, I've looked at video of the player. I've read about him a lot. I now saw him in the world baseball classic that pushed me over the top and he's got more pop. I think than most people realize. I just thought the contract was monstrous five years, $90 million plus a posting fee of 15 mil. So the Red Sox went uh, 105 because it was quick. I mean, the day he was posted was the day he was signed. And there were some other teams in front offices talking shit about the Red Sox being like, there were no bids close. So we're about to find out. And it was actually a line in Ken's it was. athletic I was article. Did you read Ken's article of course, he said, overpaid say, my ass? Overpay my ass, <laughs> AL Rookie of the Year. I'll go 100 <laughs> to win 600 for Yoshida. Yeah, he's 5'8". He's going to get on base a he ton. He struggled a little bit in the also, WBC too. No, but he had a, he had a bunch of RBIs, didn't he? Didn't he have like wasn't 13, at one point he was RBIs? like one for thirty or something? No, I no, not like, him. Not him. No, that wasn't him. No, that no, was that was um, Kawa. Uh, yeah, that was the uh, yes, was, their, their other he? big boy. The other big um, guy. He's he's the big power guy out okay. there. No, yo, Yoshida was great in, okay. in the World Baseball Classic. Very professional at bat. The only argument you can make is like, should he be a rookie? I mean, what is he 20, 28 or nine years old, something like that? But anyway, that's my take, uh, Kratzy. Yoshida for sure. I'm I'm tailing that all day long, especially at plus 600. I think what he's done and some of the numbers that he's put up play here in America that he put up in the Nippon League. And he's he's got some he's got great on base. I I actually picked Seiya Suzuki last year, and his injuries kind of played into it. But there's there's it's a similar player, a little less power. But the on base from the left side is huge. And I mean, you're going to, there's a chance a guy could be like a 370 to 390 on base guy. And that's just going to, it's going to, it could be a boring pick, but I love it. 
Praise you, Talon. <laughs> so I, I got down Anthony Volpe, but of course, AJ wrote it down too. But I'm going, I'm going with another Red Sox. I, and I think he's still a rookie, Tristan Cassis. I played with him in the Olympics. He's the, he'll be, he had a walk-off home run the other day. This guy's an absolute stud. I still think he's available to be rookie of the year. I don't think he got enough of bats in uh, last year. And if that's the case, that's the one pick where you could put 100 on and hopefully get a big payout as well. He's going to have a heck of a year. You guys got to start giving me your, your picks in advance so I can look this shit up. Like, you're, you're throwing guys rookie. off the board. He's yes, still he is. Rookie. Yeah, I know, but I, I, like to get the, I like to get the odds so I can tell the people that are, that are tuning in here Plus nine hundred, right? Plus nine hundred for Cassis. That's not. It's not. No, plus that's 10, good. 000. That's good. Just give me the heads up so I can tell the people. But yeah, plus nine hundred. I like that. Kids I'm a stud. Kids he is. a stud. Hits the good, ball hard. Plays great base. Deep. Hits mm -hmm. the ball hard. He's smart. He's gonna he's learn. A little, he's he's a little crazy, but he's, uh, yeah. he's he's got the nails painted. We got to get him on the show. I'm gonna get him on the show. Get him on. Gotta, hey, yeah. Hey, hey phrase. You know how many home runs Tristan Cassis hit last year? He played for a month and a half. Uh, you know, one, five, more than Jose Abreu, your home run champion. <laughs> <laughs> you, I like hey, that listen, one, <laughs> Did you, did you play with Jose Abreu? You played with Jose, I did not, didn't you? I did not, no. I, I, oh, I did okay. not. Oh, you, you were back in the polo grounds. All right, my bad. All right. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. All right, what's next? NL Rookie of the Year. We had a better pace of play on that one, too. I like it. Uh, Jordan Walker, plus 375. Corbin Carroll right there with him. Plus 400, Miguel Vargas at plus 700, Senga's at 800, and Ezekiel Tovar at plus 900. Kratz, you start. Corbin Carroll. I mean, this guy has – he's going to have 300 stolen bases, according to Todd. <laughs> <laughs> but there's, there's so much to like about him. Talking to somebody that plays with the Diamondbacks, like he is – his makeup is off the charts. And my biggest thing – He's going to play every single day. Yes, his speed game, people are like, ah, oh, you know, I don't know. But his speed, his speed is magnified in Arizona because Dave McKay gets these guys running the bases like, like their hair's on fire. And he's one of them. You watch the game and you're like, holy cow, is he going to fall going around first base? That's what Dave McKay wants them to do. They're taking these hard corners. He is going to – he's going to be awesome. Unfortunately, I don't think the team is going to be awesome. But – He's going to be awesome playing a premier position, too. Uh, I love that. I'll, I'll go second because I'm telling that. Um, for me, Jordan Walker is just is so damn young. Um, I just feel like he'll probably have some hiccups. And he's a huge dude. I know he doesn't have any holes in his swing, but I, the league will get you. They'll figure out some holes in your swing for a little bit of time. Then Carroll, you know, even when things aren't going right, he can create offense for himself because he's so fast. He was last year fastest player in the sport by sprint speed. He just signed the monster deal. So for me... <sighs> Take a little breather and go out and prove it, but also you're rich regardless, so you're good. So I'm with you, Kratzy. I think that's a great play. Arizona's ballpark's good for hitting. So Corbin Carroll, for me, he'll show everything off. The only thing that holds him back, and that's why, you know, you look at this and you're like, plus 400, that seems pretty good. Well, yeah, I mean, a lot can happen this season. Guys get hurt. For me, the biggest thing is young guys sometimes come up and they think they're Superman. Like, remember Bryce Harper's, like, bleeding, running into fences and all that? I'm just like, <laughs> Corbin, they, they need you for the whole year. So just be careful. Cause, cause he'll do that. He'll, he'll dive into walls. He's crazy. Praise. I'm going with Kodai. Um, Kodai Sanga. I think he's going to have an exceptional year. He's got that ghost pitch. He's going to fit well with the Mets. He's going to be that number three guy coming in. But like, hey, what do we expect from him? Come out there, dominate. Just do what you're you're supposed to do. Do what you did, um, you know, in previous years. Throw that split finger. Throw that fastball. Keep keep hitters off balance. And I think he everything's going to work well. He's got Verlander and Scherzer there for help. And um, I see big things from him this year. I hate to do this. I was actually going to go with Miguel Vargas, but I saw him strike out in the, sub, in the freeway series. I know it doesn't mean anything, but it just left a bad taste in my mouth last night when I was watching the game. So I got to go Carroll, Corbin Carroll. I agree with you guys. Mm -hmm. I think he's going to get the most at-bats. The thing about Jordan Walker that scares me is we talked about this with Katie Wu. Where, what, how many at-bats is he going to get? They're going to be real careful, I think, at times with matchups with him. So he's going to lose a little bit of playing time here and there. Senga with the Mets, I just worry about the first year of, of Japanese guys, pitchers especially coming over here because they're not used to the five-day rotation. So they always seem to miss some time in there. 
And, and then Corbin Carroll has done it. He did it last year when he first came up. And I think with the contract, like Scott said, he relaxes and he just goes out and has a monster year. Almost a clean sweep with Corbin Carroll. Let's go right to World Series winner now. So, Fraz, you missed the last couple of days. We did all our division picks and all that. You're, you still have homework. That's all due. We'll post that on social media. I saw Adam Jones in the email thread this morning send us his picks, his division, World Series, the whole deal. So out of what we have, I'm going to start this way, and I, I should be reading the board here too for the podcast crowd. World Series winner, futures bets, top ones on the board right now, Houston plus 600, Atlanta's at plus 750. You've got the Dodgers and the Yankees at plus 800. You have the Mets and the, and the Padres at plus 900, and the Blue Jays at plus 1200. My first question, and then I'll, this is to dictate two starts first. Does anyone have a team that's not on the board as their World Series winner? <coughs> no? Okay, good. Okay. So, AJ, why don't you start? Give us, I want, who's in the World Series? We already know your picks and we'll post them again. Um, who's in the World Series and who's winning it? Didn't Ken say Houston and Atlanta? Didn't he say that when we just talked? He did. About? He that's said Houston over I, Atlanta. That's it just that too lights up my eyes when I look at this, and I've looked at it. And even Susan Waldman, who loves Frazier's hugs, said Houston, as long as they're in the American League, is the team to beat. And I just think something about Atlanta this year, after missing out the way Philly kind of st- took their championship parade and, and kind of said no more. I think Atlanta has a chip on their shoulder. Acuna's back for the whole year. I know they lost Swanson. They'll find somebody to play shortstop, whether it's Grissom later or they go out and make a trade. All their guys are locked up. I think it's those two, and I think Houston wins it again. I think they're just too darn good, and they're, they have too many resources. They have too many weapons. Alvarez, Altuve, Bregman, kind of Tucker, Framber Valdez, Garcia, Christian Javier, Ryan Presley comes in, closes out again. I think Houston gets revenge on Atlanta, and they go back to back. Kratzy, Very your nice. thoughts? I, I mean, it's a safe, it's a safe pick. I love it. I just think, you know, history says it's tough to repeat. And mm-hmm. I was one of these players. I played for this team. We had their manager on. Todd knows who I'm picking, so I'm gonna let Todd tell you who who I think is gonna win the World Series, and I'll tell you who they're gonna beat in the World Series. <laughs> so, I think you're picking the Philadelphia Phillies. To yeah. beat. Yankees. Phillies aren't on the board. Yeah, he just asked if Philly who had someone not on the board. Yeah, this is this wow, is man. the bank account on the line. You know, Yankees. Who? who? Oh, Yankees what? are gonna beat the Braves in six or seven. Was this, I think this is the year they figure it out. I think something that sometimes, and I was a little bit critical after I finished with the Yankees, energy with the Yankees is a huge thing. They're very, like, buttoned up, very, like, bow tie. You know, everybody's – not that they don't have – not that they don't have personalities there. I think they just need to let the personalities shine. And I think when you bring in a guy, and I'm not saying Anthony Volpe is going to be rookie of the year. I'm saying when you bring in a guy like Anthony Volpe and he brings the energy that young guys can only bring, no matter, no matter who you are, it's got to come from the young guys. It's going to put a shot in their arm where it's like, it's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to not be all buttoned up. And I think that is going to put the Yankees, that energy level, because the talent's there. They're going to get guys back in the rotation that are going to get healthy as the season goes. That energy level is going to be infectious, and the dudes are going to roll. Bro, you're making me, like, second-guess my decisions right now, the way you're talking. Like, you're getting me fired up here, brother. Um, I'm looking to my right here because I wrote everything down. I'm going <clears> – <throat> let's see here. I got the Padres making it to the for the NL – First in the Astros, and I think the Astros win it again. It's tough, man. They've oh, ever since I don't I don't get it. The Astros, like Susan said, man, they always find ways to beat the Yankees. I'm hoping that's not the case, but I think Dusty Baker gets his second championship and the rest is history for him. And he rides it out and he says, you know what? I'm done. I had my fun career. Put me in the Hall of Fame, and I'll see you guys later. All good ones. Ready for me? I'm gonna go a little different. It's on the it's you're on the board. You're gonna go Blue Jays, Mets. Close. Wow. You got one right. I know Blue Jays because you're all over the Blue Jays. Yeah, but I don't have them winning. 
I've got Toronto in the World Series against the Padres, and the Padres as your World Series champion. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's what? It's terrible pick. No, I'm just they're plus nine hundred. I understand Surprise that. Surprised you didn't say Angels. <laughs> Dude, I want to make angels. this clear, Todd. You're not, the are you not this guy watching? is infatuated with the Angels. No, no, Todd, you've missed the show. This guy is as much as he That's loves Ben Verlander, Todd. He hates I, I hate the Angels. Yeah, he does not like the Angels. <laughs> Todd, I, I got in trouble at my old job for talking shit about the Angels too much. I hate the Angels for years. Not not the team. I'm not rooting for or against them. I want them to do no. well, Otani and Trout. I hate the way that they're run. They've done shit yeah. for 10 years and they don't invest in pitching. I've been all over them. You got the wrong guy with the with the hair too tall. I think that's no, your boy you. uh, Ben Berlander. You. He loves the Angels and Otani, my friend Ben. Anyway, no. Um, Padres, for me, I think Soto's going to have a big year. I th- there's a lot of line of protection there. I think Machado's chilling rich again. He's going to have a huge year. Um, I think some of the pitchers are going to do well. I think they'll slow play a Darvish um, into the season and make sure he's kind of at his best come playoff time. Um, Joe Musgrove, I love in a playoff series. He's a gamer. So I think their bullpen's yeah. great. I love Cronenworth. Very clutch. Takes another step. He's still re- really young. I think, what, this is his third year in the bigs. I like the lineup a lot for San Diego. That they, they keep adding. And Bogarts, hello, that addition. Plus, guess what happens at the trade deadline? They're going to do more because that's what they do. And this is their window of opportunity right now. And here's the storyline part of it that I love for Major League Baseball. Besides Steve Cohen, the owners hate the Padres right now because they're like, oh, it's a small – they might hate them more. It's a small market team that's spending, that's actually proving, fuck it, we can do that and increase the value of our franchise and make everyone happy. So they're making so many other teams look bad. And I love to see teams that do things get rewarded. And that's what the Padres, I think, are in my book. And the other side of it is with Toronto. I think their window of opportunities right now as well. Like it, it's you're going to look. It's not like oh they're building up. Like no, this team is is what you're getting right now. I think a prime Blue Jays team. So I think this is the year they kind of push themselves over. They're not being talked about as much as the year before. So I, I, the other thing with Toronto that's funny always with the league is. The, the league doesn't want Toronto. No, they, do <laughs> they don't want Toronto. You know this no, story, Fresh? No, they don't. No, I don't. There's one team that that the league, that MLB, the, the league office, mm-hmm. doesn't root for. I mean, wow. they root for obviously big markets, but they don't want the Blue Jays because they don't get the ratings because it's in Canada. They don't they don't There's get to cash the out the same the way. Ooh, right baby, off the top. Interesting. Here we so, go. You had me sold there when you started talking. But Where the more you talked. You? You sounded kind of like a used car salesman trying to convince me to buy like the old Impala instead of the new car. So, yeah. yeah. What, what did I say that that you just was off? You just were trying really hard on the Padres. They got great pitching. You Darvish in big games, nah. Uh, Joe Musgrove's hurt. Blake Snow can't go more than five innings in the postseason. <laughs> uh, Tatis, what's he going to bring back? Uh, I don't know. You just you, you were trying too hard Tatis to sell me. Tatis is a that. bonus. You're trying too hard to sell me on it. I got to see Juan Soto get back to the old Juan Soto. You're way too hard on Juan Soto. He's going to have a great Don't year. forget, the Padres The Padres lost to the Phillies. Like, they were closer than people. Yes. Than people put off there. Like, Thank I, you. I, I mean, I don't, I don't hate your pick. I, I, think it's, I think it's an intriguing pick. If you wanted an intriguing pick, Scotty's is an intriguing pick. Pick mm-hmm. to watch. You guys are boring. You guys are picking powerhouses. I'm picking like I'm picking a the little more. Okay, fine. So we'll see what happens. But I've, I've got plus 900 there with the Padres. Houston's plus 600. All right, ready? First time we're doing this. Let's throw it up on the board here. We have our own bonus code. Spicy ball. First bet offer 1000 bucks, And here's how you get it. Four steps. Sign up and deposit in, uh, money into your newly created account. Download the BetMGM Sports app on iOS or Android or visit BetMGM.com. Place your first bet offer and receive up to 1000 bucks back in bonus bets if the bet loses. And if it does lose, your bonus bets will be available once the wager is settled. That's pretty. Looks good. Always bet responsibly. Gambling problem or concern, call 1-800-GAMBLER. There's all your picks. Uh, they will be posted later today, <laughs> too, so that we can refer back to them. Connor, social team behind the scenes is all over it right now. Um, and one more thing I wanted to do before we get out of here for slap hands, just give me one pitching matchup. Cause we're going to be on live tomorrow where games are going to be going on. So I'm sure AJ will have one of the TVs going and we can react to some games cause we're a live show. One pitching matchup that you're looking forward to, especially if you want to pinpoint some of the earlier games, cause we can preview more tomorrow for the later games, but 
Is there something on the earlier side that you're looking at that might even be going on while while we're in action here on FT Live, which is at one o'clock Eastern starting tomorrow? Anyone got something they want to throw out there? I like the Burns and Stroman. I love I love seeing a guy come out and throwing some angry cutters up there at 96 to 99. I mean, I think he's got I think that whole team has a lot to prove and Stroman's Stroman's must watch TV. So I'll have the TV in the background. So if you guys see me like kind of checking out, you'll see, <laughs> you know, just give me back. But opening day is the best. I'm going, I'm going Nola uh, versus DeGrom. Old, old Philly Mets action there. I want to see how DeGrom is, if he's 100%, see what Nola's got to prove this year. It's a big year for uh, both these guys. I think that's going to be an intriguing matchup at 405 in Arlington. I'm with you there. I want to, when I look at pitching matchups, that's I want to see a guy in a new place. That's the easy. That, that's I, but that's, that's what I'm looking one. for. We're not, it's not like there's odds on this. We're just yeah. no easiness about <laughs> yeah, it. It's what do you the mean? best matchup. We're just looking uh, for what we're excited about. Okay. I'll take C's versus Fran Valdez. Okay. As a pretty good darn matchup. C's Valdez finished what? Second in the Cy Young. C's was third last year in the American league. They're both top five, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, they were definitely top five. I don't remember the order. Pretty yeah. darn good. So he strikes out everybody. Valdez gets those sinkers. And your boy Jose Abreu, his first game as an Astros against his old squad. And Todd's got him hitting four homers. Put him down one homer opening day. Let's go, baby. <laughs> <laughs> if he clicks. is going to try and throw that fastball. He's going to go click, <laughs> drop the bat and run. Let's roll. God, I can't wait. Opening day, boys. It's coming. Can't wait. Let's go. Yeah. Can't wait. It should be a I national holiday. Cease should was be. two, by the way, last year, and Valdez was five. Okay. So, close. But, yeah, I'm, no one's knocking Cease and Valdez. I'm just, we're, we're just saying, Frazier and I, we want to see DeGrom in the new spot. Yeah. And you're the one that always gives him a hard time about not making many starts. So, oh. uh, we know he's starting opening day. He's healthy you for did, opening you day. Did. You're right, Scott. Yeah. Scott, you're right. Scott, yeah, I put the right. over-under at how many starts? Tomorrow, Wait. one. Yeah, 20, 25 or something, I think yeah, I said. Yeah, I'm going under. Okay, then you're the one giving him crap. I, 25 is a lot. No, I know. I, I'm I'm going under. Okay. For okay. him, it's just he hasn't been on the field a lot lately, so prove it. <laughs> Pablo Lopez makes his debut tomorrow also for the, for for the, the Twins, Twins, which That's is a intriguing good one. to me because he's going to be very important if they have a chance. Scherzer versus Alcantara. Listen, you want power stuff? Scherzer versus Alcantara in Miami where it's not freezing cold. They have a dome. They'll have Friday off because that's what MLB does. <laughs> it's going to be – and then Verlander game two, that's intriguing I'm taking stuff, the under though. on that game. Scherzer, <laughs> Scherzer Alcantara. The over-under is three and a half. Good luck. No, I'm just kidding. Ready for slap hands? Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Braves, you haven't seen this, have you? Oh. Apparently we can talk while this is going on. I love it. So my idea also is when we're at Frazier's on Friday, it'll be Kratz, me, and Todd in the same spot. Um, AJ's getting a Manny Petty. But wait, uh, is this this Friday you're going to Jersey? Yeah. All right. And then you'll be here. there Monday, Tuesday. I'm, right? I'm there all next week. Oh, so I could do this by myself. So you're going to be home alone here, so <laughs> don't get in too much trouble. Uh, do yeah. I sit in your seat or my seat? That's a good question. That's not one for me. That's for the uh, the powers that be behind the scenes. Opening day tomorrow, one o'clock Eastern time is the show from now on. Um, also merch coming soon. We've had a few questions about shirts, hats, the whole deal. They'll be available. By the way, are you guys wearing shirts or hats at your first pitch for us? I will. I'll wear my hat. You're wearing the hat? For sure. Is the shirt, see, my thing was for the shirt for you for first pitch, you should, you should rip one shirt that turns into like, do something, sign Otani. Something like that oh, yeah. for White Sox. <laughs> you want me to get fired? You guys are already trying to get you fired. Jeez. <laughs> That's oh, better than yeah. firing hey, you. Would you rather wear that or a Cubs shirt underneath? Anything except the Cubs. Shirt. Right. So do I'd something. I'd rather run Sino around the stadium Tani. naked than we have a Cubs on. <laughs> Prove it. <laughs> uh, Frage, first pitch coming soon, right? Uh, yeah. Are, I mean, are we are we gonna have a little little side bet on who throws a better pitch? Or who Hell throws... yes. Wait, when is yours? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. When's yours? Monday. Oh, so oh, oh, so I get a little head. Ah, all right. So I'm gonna I'll do the, the show Monday on. from Chicago from the stadium. Oh, so you're not even opening day. Are you opening well, day? I'm opening day for the White Sox home. Oh, okay, I, gotcha. Yeah, right. for their home opener. So I'm gonna yeah. do the show Monday from Chicago from Guaranteed Ray Field. And then go throw the first pitch, nail it, go sign some autographs, take some pictures, watch 
White Sox beat the Giants and go home happy. Get free food. <laughs> What's is the AJ, wager? Is AJ taking a to-go box from the free food no. at the stadium, Todd? No. Is he going? Oh is he God. going? Is he uh, going styrofoam like, to go box shutting it no. and taking some back for the fans? Hey, he's like, yeah, yeah. Do you mind? I'm just going to take this for my kids and everybody else. No, that is Come not on, me. Man. Can we get a dinner or something? Steak dinner on this? What are we doing? What, what what's we like? the bet? Better first pitch, and we can have there. There'll be a, a group. We can have an independent group that that rates it if it's real close. But I feel like you, you got to say where we'll you're going to throw the pitch. You got to say where, what part of the zone you're going to throw the pitch. No, we're just going to throw it from the mound, and whoever has a better – well, he's not throwing a strike. Whoever has a better strike wins because I, my BP from there oh, – mm, man, a I can't A better strike? That's it? Yeah. I'm, so, I mean, what else do you, what else wait, you got to do? Wait, have you, you thrown out you a first pitch? Have you normal? done this before? Frazier, have you done this before? I've done it once, okay. and it was a ball. I threw a ball. Okay. As Joey Votto once told you, Google me. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. Steak dinner. We'll talk about it. Steak dinner. All right. We can talk about uh, it after you bounce your first we'll have pitch. Have plenty of time. Yep. Uh, two more things to go here. Military base of the day. United States yes. Navy's Atlantic Undersea Test and Evaluation Center in the Bahamas, a laboratory that performs integrated three dimensional hydrospace and aerospace trajectory measurements covering the entire spectrum of undersea simulated warfa uh, warfare. Ooh, I, I didn't understand 90% of that sentence. Ooh, so I just want to go I'm to glad Ron Burgundy hooked me up with that. I'm, I agree. I would check that out for sure. And uh, Jazz Chisholm's the face of uh, the cover of the show this year too. So he's apparently the biggest deal in Bahamas. He's from there. Um, Kratz yeah. Hats, what do you got today? Well, actually, I was going to uh, – that was what I was studying in school – before I went for my business degree was exactly what you just read about the naval base and aerospace trajectory measurements. That's me and Todd. We're, we were in classes together. I'm glad the baseball mm. thing worked out for you. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Anybody have any idea what this is? The Oof. ostriches, the fighting ostriches. Emu. That from dude, where's my car? It is an emu. That's, that's right. It's not dude, where's my car, but the same animal. The Redding Fighting Phils. They have the guy that comes out here, and they have the mascot riding this emu, and he's he's throwing he's throwing hot dogs out over the over the scoreboard. Became so famous, you know. It looks like the guy's riding it, and the ostrich emu legs are like are the emu legs, but it's obviously it's his legs, and they have these like fake legs dangling off to the side. So famous, it became a hat. But Redding Phillies. Spent a nice little – my only true big league rehab assignment was there. All my other rehab assignments, they were Phantom DL rehab assignments. So <laughs> we'll have to get that story you know, at some point. Sultan. <laughs> From Dude, where's my car? Dude, where's my car? Yeah, it's good. It's a good throwback there. Hey, uh, cue that music, baby. I, I want a different picture for me. I look confused. Yeah, me too, man. I'm yeah, dominating well, that picture, by the you way. You are. Kratzy, I'm trying to figure out why Kratzy I don't have a hat like on. And when the hell did I actually comb my hair? That's a good question. Kratzy <laughs> looks like he's going to take us out. You, know? you look like the like Wolverine in that picture, AJ. Uh, me, me and Hugh Jackman, very similar physiques. Hugh Jackman. <laughs> Sounds like Todd's what he always talks about. <laughs> <laughs> Showing the promo. Uh, hey, know. play the music. And tomorrow, at least two, probably potentially more, uh, Paul Seawald, closer of the Seattle Mariners, him and Andres Munoz, that is a one-two punch at the back end. I know, I know. I like Seattle, too. I get it. And then June, <laughs> June Lee, I, I was just like, AJ, we don't have time. I know. I like the Mariners and the Blue Jays. Sorry. And then June Lee, who does a great job writing uh, for ESPN, he's going to come on and, and talk about um, previewing the season. I think he's got a little something extra for us on Anthony Volpe that he's going to go through. So looking forward to that. Frage, good luck on your first pitch, all right? Go dominate Pierzynski. Thank Make you. him look bad. I'll, I'll see you in a, in a two days, brother. Two days, Fraser Friday, all of us there in person. And again, uh, cheers to BetMGM, our new partner. Um, you'll get picks from us every day. Can't wait, baby. Jose Abreu, your 2023 <laughs> home run champion. See you it's, Thursday. AJ, you <laughs> laugh, bro. Come on. I'm, I'm laughing. I'm laughing real hard. It's fun. Real hard. <laughs> <laughs>